Well, good evening, everybody. Gord King here with episode 14 of The King's Court, Forrest Gump. Happy to be with you all tonight and looking forward to talking about this cinema classic that is much beloved by many. And I'm also looking forward to chatting about it with my guests tonight. So let's go ahead and introduce them now. One quick word, uh, Untamed Mando, she was supposed to be here, but uh, she had a bit of an uh, emergency at home, so she will not be with us. And Stupenzo, we are not sure of the state of him. As I mean, we, we know he's been in a celebratory state. He's uh, He was enjoying the eclipse quite a bit. And, uh, well, he, well, he could we'll possibly see. still be in a celebratory. Uh... Oh my gosh. There he is. He's right there. Oh, it's <laughs> going on. It so. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, I'm driving. I'm about an. I'll, I'll probably just be joining you guys in an hour. Oh well, that's good but... timing because I can't. I can't stay too long, so you can sort of take oh, over the line. Okay, well, I'm taking it out. But yeah, I just wanted to chime in real quick before you all start and say I love this movie. Me and Megan is very special to us. We quote it all the time. She's basically, my little Jenny. Uh, but yeah, uh, I am driving in the boonies, so it is kind of spotty reception. So I'll be listening, so that way when I jump in in an hour, I'll be all caught up. I won't have anything, all right? All right, that's that sounds good. This this almost sounds like the uh, the JFK broadcast from the film, but yeah. So I guess we will see you in uh, about an hour or so, buddy. <laughs> cool. See you guys. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. Enzo is going to be here about an hour or so. And uh, Lance, uh, as he said, Lance is going to be here uh, about an hour or so, a uh, half hour, however, however long he needs to sleep. You know, my, my well, name's not Michael, not Michael Sarah. <laughs> you know, Michael Sarah, you know, he, he wouldn't have been such a bad Forrest Gump if this movie came out like in Actually, 2010. <laughs> he he could have been. A, yeah, he would have been a good choice. But he uh, he definitely could have played that kind of character. Yeah, I, I think he could have pulled it off. But uh, also joining us is uh, he's always been a really good supporter of the channel. Uh, he has some fun uh, live content. He does a lot of video game stuff. And uh, this is actually his very first appearance on somebody else's live stream. And that is Mr. Giggles and Bits. How you doing, good sir? Ah, doing good, doing good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to ruining my roommate's uh, uh, nightgown uh, with this first <laughs> thing. So, <laughs> should, do we need yep. to know more detail about what you're going to be doing with the nightgown, or, or should we? Uh, just... Purely hey. clean up. Purely. Yeah. Clean up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, that's hey. Force did it. I don't. I don't see why people here can't do it. <laughs> it should be fine. But uh, anyway, yeah, so Forrest Gump, uh, big Oscar winner, came out in 1994. This is, I mean, it's 30 years since this movie came out. Uh, and I guess uh, before, uh, I guess before we get started, uh, I guess I'd like to know what are people's first experiences with it. Uh, myself, uh, I saw this at home. Uh, I didn't see it in theaters. Uh, I was I was a bit, I was a bit young. Uh not so young as where I didn't visit theaters, but that was all at the discretion of the folks. So we didn't see this one there, but we rented it. I thought it was really fun, really good. Uh, I do think its reputation is slightly overrated personally, but uh, I do still consider it. Uh, I do consider it a great film. I just, I, I have a bit of a, a little mini grudge against it winning best picture. I don't think it deserved it, <laughs> but uh, it is a great movie though. I do. I do like it a lot. But uh, Lance, uh, you had a pretty interesting first experience, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I did. Um, interestingly enough, of course, when I was checking, fact checking for doing this stream, I forgot that the screenplay was written by none other than Eric Roth. And uh, Eric oh. Roth more recently wrote the screenplay for part one of the new June reboot or reimagining, whatever you want to call it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he wrote. Um, part one of Denis Villeneuve's June screenplay, but curiously doesn't appear to have um, uh, the credit for uh, part two, which is, seems odd, um, seeing hmm. as it's one film just broken in half. Um, yes, in terms of me seeing this, so I lived in 
Nottingham in 1994, and although I can't remember much about that period, uh, one of the things I do have is I have all my cinema tickets. Oh, okay, and, cool. And there was, you could sign up for, um, for some reason, Nottingham was seen as a good place to test movies because it was in the middle of the country. It was a university town, so it had a huge college population. Um, but it also had a, the mix of the population was considered to be quite universal for the rest of the UK. So what they what the distribution. Oh, goodness. Sorry, Lance. Oh, sorry about that. That was my fault. That's all right. <laughs> a so little bit the, of touchy touchpad. <laughs> what the distribution companies like to do is they like to, to road test movies way ahead. And you'd have to the only commitment you had to make. The tickets were free. Um, was you you had to agree to stay behind and fill out a questionnaire. So I signed up to join this club. I thought, free films, this sounds great. And um, the two films that I remember, uh, pr pretty much saw them weeks apart, I think, was this and Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. And what, nice. was great, what was great about seeing these films under, under these conditions was uh, that you were seeing them before anything had come out at all. So no trailers had dropped for Forrest Gump. No trailers had dropped for Shawshank. All I knew was that it was called Forrest Gump and it had Tom Hanks in it. And I was a huge Tom Hanks fan. I'd been following his career since Bachelor Party. So what was nice for me about this movie was I went in to see it completely blind. And I think one of the things that they were really concerned about when they were screen testing it because it hadn't been released in America either when I saw it, was the length of the film, because I remember there were questions about that. And um, it was a completely full house, about 200 people in there, and everybody was completely engaged in the film. You know, you could just tell everybody was invested. Everybody was really into the movie. Yeah. And I just found it really delightful. It was quite a surprise because I hadn't really seen a film. I'm trying to think of another film that I could say, oh, it's a bit like, Forrest Gump, but there isn't one that immediately springs to mind that, that that was like this around at the time. I guess that film about the photographer doing strange things, and at one point he jump, jumps off a boat and then he's skateboarding down a mountain in Iceland. What's that movie called? The mm. And um, it's one, you're one guy and he's trying to track down this photographer who's taking a photograph of a cat Is in that... the mountains. I want to say I've been told about this movie. Uh, oh, shoot. That's quite similar in terms of tone and content because it's a Forrest Gump's what you'd call a road movie, but it's doesn't a it road... have like a really like long title about yes, like, someone, it does. someone jumping out of a window? Yes, or... yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My sister told me about this movie and it was kind of like Forrest Gump. It's, I... it's got, it's, 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 um, oh, oh, God, God the actor with the annoying face that's in, um, uh, that's not uh, it's not Walter Mitty, it's not that one, although I think Walter Mitty is meant to be. No, it is Walter but... Mitty. That's the one. The Walter Mitty, thank you. That's the that's the one. There's, okay, well, there's another one I'm thinking of then. Yeah, but but Walter Mitty came out uh, way after Forrest Gump. So at the time that Forrest mm. Gump came out, there wasn't a film where you could say, Oh, that was you know, a bit like Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump is a road movie, but it's a road movie through time. Um where you're following one character's journey from A to B, but through time um, and these kind of historical points that he intersects. And I just found that really fascinating. It was also they used early kind of not CGI technology, but new kind of green screen plate technology that hadn't been done before. And that's how they could insert Tom Hanks into those black and white scenes. So there was a number of things that we were kind of seeing for the first time and, and and it felt like it was a risky movie it felt like um this is not the typical thing i would expect to see 90s had a lot of very big loud action films jerry bruckheimer this kind of stuff this was quite refreshing it was just very different and um yeah, it really stayed with me as a movie I, I there was a lot of things about it i i really kind of related to and <coughs> not so much um the character of forrest but several of the characters he met and I like, I like the fact everybody had an arc and yeah. And I still like it. It is a bit smulty and mm -hmm. probably is a bit overrated, but um, I, th I think it's still, a, I'll, I'll give it a score before I leave, but I, I think it's a very good film. Nice.
All right, uh, Giggles, uh, what would you say your what was your earliest experience with this, if you recall? Oh, I, I remember. Yeah, it, this was my uh, first double feature uh, that I saw at ten years old. Uh, nice. And uh, much like Lance, uh, it was a this was a pre-screen that we saw for Forrest Gump. The other movie was Angels in the Outfield. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was at the the Sundance Theater in downtown Fort Worth. And uh, by it was me, my sister, who's three years younger than me, and uh, my parents, and we just. It was just really strange how much this movie resonated with all of us. And uh, actually, as I was doing research, I uh, saw that Robert Zemeckis and uh, I can't remember the name of the producer. Uh, they were really worried about the non-traditional uh, non-traditional storytelling of this movie. So I'm not surprised to find out that there was multiple uh, attempts to kind of gauge the audience reaction uh, to the film. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, this... Uh, just the the comical the sort of the comical way that some lines are delivered uh i think that's uh, a big part of tom hanks's comedic background uh coming into play and then his just ability to just uh nail these uh emotional beats throughout the film as he's interacting with his uh with mama with uh, uh, uh bubba and uh with jenny it's uh this movie is just a treat every time i come back to it but yeah, is it overrated? Shawshank Redemption is such a good movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shawshank. Uh, yeah, yeah, highest rated movie. Like it's fun. It's funny. Three movies from this year are in are on IMDb's top uh, two fifty. Uh, well, and and they're in the top eleven. They, those three are in the top eleven. Was was, was, Pulp, was Pulp Fiction this year as well? I think it was. Yeah, was it? Pulp yeah. Fiction was this yeah. year. Uh, a uh, little bit of casting trivia, is, and I, I'd, I'd usually save that, but I think Lance might find this interesting. John Travolta was the original choice from the studio to play Forrest Gump. Funny enough. Now, no, I know, I know, I I know that, and I think okay. it was because of that that he subsequently got cast in a similar role because he did he did do screen tests for this role, yeah. and they they nearly went with him. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh... but but he did that other movie, didn't he, where he played that guy who kind of. Be suddenly become super intelligent who, who was normally yeah, phenomenon yeah phenomenon, phenomenon. Yeah. yeah yeah so they they cast him in that instead a bit further yeah. on which phenomenon's not a bad movie i liked it okay him well and, it's uh... it's it's all right it's yeah. kind of not nowhere as near as nowhere near this solid. one but it's it's no. solid it's pretty solid no. but uh yeah and it's uh this that was a pretty dang good year for movies. Uh, I, I would argue Shaw. I mean, granted, I haven't seen Four Weddings and a Funeral. That was one of the that was the other <laughs> best picture nominee. I, I would put, film. yeah, I would put Forrest Gump fourth in that mix because I also think Quiz Show is a better film, even if it's not as memorable as this one. I think top to bottom, though, I like Quiz Show more, uh, even if it lacks the rewatchability. I just I find it far more interesting and engaging, but uh, and probably slightly less flawed. But at the same time, yeah, like I said, I think this is a it's a pretty great movie, and uh, I was I mean I, it was probably my first time watching it today in about I don't know ten years maybe, and uh, I had a really good time going back through it. Was remembering a lot of uh, the quotable lines because you know despite you know my feelings of it being overrated, this is a movie that in my household growing up we quoted often, and to this day we still have a few lines we like me and my dad or me and my brother will quote back and forth. Cause it's just, it's that kind of film. It does that. It has uh, some really good, uh, really good writing, really good dialogue. We used, we used to have a Bubba Gump shrimp, like um, uh, restaurant in central London. I think they opened them as a, as a chain and they were like full of Forrest Gump paraphernalia. You know, you'd go in there and there was loads of stills and props from the movie and all this kind of thing. But unfortunately, that was one of the casualties of the pandemic. It did not survive. So, well, it's funny because it's uh, like it can't like the the Bubba Gump Shrimp chain opened so soon after this film came out. Obviously, in response to the movie, it, they just uh, it, and it turned out to be a good idea. They had like forty some odd franchises, but it came out so close to it that a lot of younger people, like that I went to school with, actually thought that that was a real restaurant that came way before this and that the movie was kind of doing with history <clears throat> with that, what they were doing with everything else. And I'm like, no, Bubba Gump's not, wasn't real before this. That was made because of the film. So, uh, yeah, that's, but funny. It's, uh, that's pretty funny. But anyway, so 
going through the movie here. We have this fun opening scene. It's uh, you got this uh, nice lady. He comes, sits down, and he awkwardly just starts telling him, telling her all this stuff about himself, talking about her shoes. Uh, this is uh, this is the first. This was the scene where he utters the line about life being like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he starts telling his story of his magic shoes. And this kid here, uh, his accent is who Tom Hanks based his own accent off of, mm -hmm. which he was, uh, he was a bit iffy on doing that kind of bizarre Southern draw. He wasn't quite, because it sounded, you know, it does sound comical. It's, and that's, but it actually ended up working. Zemeckis insisted upon doing it that way. <laughs> that, that kid is um, Michael uh, Connor Humphreys. And, mm -hmm. He basically never really did anything after this. It was just that's his one sort of acting thing. I think he's made a bit of a convention career and whatnot. But yeah, he, he did a couple of other, I think two other credits, but that was it. Yeah. yeah. I, I always thought this part was hilarious just because he's telling this this black lady the story about how he got his name. And it turns out his name is after the guy who started the KKK. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You've got all this real footage of them. And they, they I mean, they look, <laughs> they look ridiculous with all that. Yeah. Clothes. You know, and Grant, it's, you know, it's, it kind of shows his lack of self-awareness, but at the same time, you know, he's, you know, it's just their, it's not because they're racist or anything. It's just because, oh, you know, sometimes people do things that don't make no sense. And it's like, okay, sure. If that's why you want to name somebody after that guy, fine. But, uh, <laughs> I, I always thought that part was really funny and you know you get these scenes here where his uh his mom is walking him down the street and trying to keep uh keep his spirits up because he's got the braces on his legs and uh i think so it's funny because sally field and tom hanks are only like 10 years apart and have actually played love interests before i think uh i think they did a movie in the 80s where they were love interests uh but uh I think she does a really good job here as his uh, as his mother. And the scene, this scene's pretty. I love a this. little, a little funny, a little awkward because he's showing. You know, he's like, "Oh, your boy's different," because he can't get him. He's not. He won't put him into the. They don't want to put him into the normal schools because he's got an IQ of seventy five, which is five points too low. And he's like, is there a Mr. Gump, Mrs. Gump? <laughs> and basically, she sleeps with him to get him into the school. <laughs> yeah. And he then he, he comes out and has a chat with him, which is sort of like, I remember the audience kind of cringing at this, going, ooh. This is, this is like... Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that it's, because, I mean, it's like he's, you kind of wonder if he like up to this point, if he understands anything, because he really hasn't, he hasn't said a word up to this point. And the first thing he does is he makes his, his, uh, his noises that he was hearing him make. And it's like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I like, I like okay. that. Yeah. I like that because it, it's like our first little clue that Forrest is a little, like he's a little more clever than we have given him credit, uh, credit for. Mm -hmm. And then all of these scenes with Forrest that are younger, the color palette is meant to mimic Norman Rockwell paintings. Yeah, uh, that was sort of the style that Robert Zemeckis was going for. Uh, going for. All right, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, and if you were, and if you looked in his briefcase at the beginning, you saw that he had Curious George in his briefcase, and here you see that's what she's uh, that's what she's reading to him, and uh. You find out uh, the what they the the way she makes money for them is uh, she let she rents out rooms in her house. It's basically like a bed and breakfast, pretty much. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is kind of that first glimpse into the people that Forrest tends to cross paths with. And here, while they don't show his face, it's uh, it's Elvis Presley, who uh, it's un it's an uncredited role, but the voice of Elvis Presley is Kurt Russell, which I thought that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, and but the actor who's playing him in that scene is Peter Dobson. Yeah. Um, and he um, went on to have a pretty solid career as an actor. He's been in quite a lot of stuff. Um, and if you, I mean, if you look at him now, you'll go, oh, yeah, you know. But uh, more interesting 
Um, he played um, one of the main guys, uh, Ray Liansky, in The Frighteners in 1996, which, of course, oh, was nice. Peter Jackson's first kind of Hollywood movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like that film. I think that film is massively underrated. Yeah, that, that's a that's gr- a great film. <laughs> yeah, so he's one of the main characters in The Frighteners. Um, so just an interesting note. This lady on the school bus has done shitloads of movies as well. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. been on a ton of stuff. I, yeah. I, I, even as a kid, when I first watched this, I recognized her. Yeah, from same. From various same. stuff. Yeah, but, uh, yeah that's um, Siobhan Fallon Hogan. I wonder if oh, she's any... Yeah. Any relation to Hulk Hogan? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't but, think she is, but it'd be funny. <laughs> uh, no, she she wouldn't be because Hulk Hogan's not his real name. <laughs> Most recently, you might have seen her in uh, What We Do in the Shadows, the TV series, and she was also in an episode of Billion. She's one of the trustees in that. Um, so she she's still going. She's still a jobbing actress. Yeah, I know she was in like episodes of Seinfeld and stuff like that. Yeah, she yeah, was... three. She did three three Seinfeld episodes. Yeah, she's a she's a solid character actress. I really like her. But uh, here, young Force, he meets he meets Jenny for the first time, and it's kind of a love at first sight uh, thing. And uh, you know, they just have their little back and forth of questions, and they're fast friends. Uh, and you learn that she doesn't like to go home, so uh, yeah, they kind of build towards the fact that she's uh she's abused at home, and. Mm. Uh, you know, he's kind of always there for because, you know, yeah, that's handled that, that's handled quite well. One of the one of the kids on the school bus, uh, who I think, has one line with Tom Hanks is Zemeckis, his, um son. Oh, OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Tom Hanks's daughter is also on that bus. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. There you go. Probably half the, the producers and, you know, they probably all got a kid on there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here we get uh, another rather iconic scene. I mean, of course, you have. You have the kids who start bullying him and throwing rocks at him. One of them hits him really hard, <laughs> but uh, she starts yelling, "Run, Forrest, run!" And uh, you get this really like cool kind of triumphant moment for him, where he breaks through his leg braces and finds out he can basically, as he says here, he can run like the wind blows. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and it uh, now he just basically he runs everywhere. Which I can't imagine running in those shoes is very comfortable though, because those don't look yeah. those those look pretty fragile. Those don't look nice. <laughs> but uh, but here we basically get it confirmed that her uh, Jenny's home life is uh, really rough. Her dad's a drunk. Uh, Forrest says that he uh, basically basically he, while he doesn't realize what it means, but he's his her father basically molested her and. They even allude to her having siblings, which never get shown in the film. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know if that's different from the book or. Um, I, I don't. I know a little bit about the book. I know the book tonally is very different. Uh, Forrest is not quite the same kind of character, but uh, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they actually allude to that in the book or not because I haven't read it all the way through. I yeah, didn't. I, I really um, didn't get very into the book. I read a couple of chapters and I was like, eh, I don't care for this that much. <laughs> Now, I do know um, originally in the script, uh, Jenny, uh, the reason why she gets removed from the house is she, uh, uh, the script originally had her killing her dad. Oh, wow. Mm. But they cut that out. And I'm glad they did because that, that would have completely changed the character moving forward. Yeah. I thought it was a really smart yeah. decision. Would have been, a, I mean, she she goes a little far in the movie already. And I was like, that's probably yeah. a bridge too far. <laughs> and a little too, like, it, that's a little too like overly Hollywood, even for this movie. <laughs> yeah. I always thought we were going a bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> now this anyway. scene is similarly, it's, it's not quite as iconic as when he's a child running away. And I'll be honest, I think this scene is not very well edited, which is ironic because this film actually won best editing, but I don't like the way this scene is, is edited. Cause like one oh, of the show. guys chasing him with the truck and that. Yeah, the car is like like the truck's one minute it's on its heels, then it's way far back, and uh, you know I guess they I mean I don't mind the fact that it's like okay they break through that fence I assume they don't really show up and I'm like okay I guess I mean that's not far fetched but <coughs> the editing is a little it's a little wonky in this scene but uh, but then it's followed up by this part where he's running across the field and you basically get Bear Bryant 
kind of discovering him, which I think is really funny. I'm a big football fan. So uh, this scene I always found pretty funny, even though I would be curious. It's like, okay, if he can just do this every time, why well, I, I would assume it's like, wouldn't you run this play pretty much every single time if nobody can catch him? <laughs> I mean, you yeah. can just run this one all game long and it's over. <laughs> But uh, I, I do I, I this that it does make me laugh a lot. The guy playing Bear Bryant cracks me up. He's constantly calling him an sob. Force just trucks over the band <laughs> the first time. I thought that was all. I thought that was all pretty great. <laughs> I liked that. Yeah, the the gentleman next to him uh, <laughs> with his wide eyes and everything it always cracks me up because it's like he didn't really know how to react in the scene. <laughs> so he always distracts me. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> well, the guy, on the, the guy on the left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is he doing? He's like, <laughs> I guess he's just having a good time. Yeah, he's doing his best to be in the scene. I don't know. <laughs> we saw a great. I, I was on a fermented cinemas channel a couple weeks ago, and we were uh, what, we were doing Dante's Peak, and it has the best terrible extra ever. This guy who is way too far into the foreground who is just reacting in such bizarre fashion. You're like, why did they put this guy so prominently on camera? He must be like somebody's brother because he's horrible, <laughs> but it's, it's funny. But uh, I, yeah, I love this guy playing Bear Bryant because he's, he's constantly, constantly is calling him. Like, he must be the stupidest son of a be alive, but he sure is fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. And here he gets himself involved in another little piece of history when they uh, desegregated uh, the university. <laughs> He's like, it's like, well, raccoons try to get on our porch. They always chase them off. My mom always chased them off with a broom. <laughs> it's like, that's not what he meant. Yeah, his naivety is so charming in that scene. <laughs> I don't think uh, this scene would appear in the film today in the yeah. way that, in, in that sort of, comical context i don't think that line would, would, would fly. Yeah. no i also thought this was uh to me this was funny because uh okay so this came out in 1994 so as a kid i used to watch the show on nickelodeon hey dude and the guy who ran the rant the little dude ranch in that show is this broadcaster here so when i saw him i was like ah it's the guy from hey dude <laughs> so uh, i always thought that was kind of funny because i've only seen him in this that show and he's in an he's in the episode of seinfeld where uh george becomes a hand model so i always thought that was uh that was pretty funny but yeah, you've got forrest just kind of poking his head in to this uh piece of history which uh this is one of the examples of the special effects that ultimately won them an oscar for that category mm -hmm. is uh the way they inserted him in and this is not a super high budget film but uh it is pretty impressive the way they managed to get him in these shots. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, I mean, it had a budget of fifty-five million, which mm -hmm. back then is a pretty yeah. It's it's yeah. It's a decent size. I mean, especially for a you know, it's not like a Jerry Bruckheimer tanks and transformers and shit. It's you know, there's some action and stuff in it, but there's not like I suppose the the probably the biggest budgeted scene would have been the Washington <laughs> Monument um, recreation. That mm -hmm. would have done. That would have been a big, yeah. They were built on that day alone would have been, yeah, a, you know, 30, 40 grand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were running close to getting over budget. So Zemeckis and Hanks both took a pay cut for, um, what are the per, uh, percentage points? That's for true. The final box office. <clears throat> yeah, and oh, they did pretty well out of that. Tom Hanks made about forty million dollars off of that transaction, so he did. He did quite well. That that helped uh, to put towards his island in Greece. Uh. <laughs> I suppose so. Yep. <laughs> but uh, here we get uh, Forrest. He he thinks he is seeing something happen to Jenny, uh, and goes and just starts beating, just wailing on this guy. <laughs> Which I was like, oh, I feel kind of sorry for this dude. He it was like he's just you know having a he was just having a good time on this date, and Forrest just beats the crap out of him. So he leaves and this is kind of like, okay, so this is the one part of the book I know is completely different because in the book, this is actually, they actually do have, they do have sex in this scene in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is actually his first, this is basically where he would, I think, lost his virginity, I want to say. 
But uh, here it's more just kind of a an awkward uh, sexual encounter between them, I guess. Not really them going all the way to it. Why and... am I feeling so strange, Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. That's a great. That's a great <laughs> grab there. You got got that. Man. It's like, oh, uh, <laughs> don't touch that. It makes me feel fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I think I ruined your roommate's bathrobe. <laughs> and she's like, oh, that's okay. I don't like her very much anyway. <laughs> I was like, jeez. And then she just looks more. Her her roommate just looks mortified. Like, what 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 did he do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because they pan, pan down to her face, don't they? If I remember right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, they just kind of keep up with history. Now they've figured out a system to make Forrest stop running, which I thought that was really, I thought that was really good. They've got like yeah. signs and the bands telling him stop. They even have the people in the stands who spell out stop. I thought, uh, that's that's all pretty good. Maybe a little remember, too coordinated, yeah. but really, really yeah. funny. Yeah, I remember the audience laughing pretty hard at that scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, he gets invited to the White House where he has him about 15 Dr. Peppers. Which, uh, Dr. Peppers, it's a decent drink. I, I don't know if I could go through 15 of them. But, uh, that didn't get released in the UK until the um, 80s. I remember the advert wow. for that trailering with the Ghostbusters movie and somebody cracking open a can and they instantly got a mohican <laughs> so that was, you know that was the that that was the sell drink of dr peppers and you're gonna look like a punk from the 1960s i know this if you drink 15 dr peppers you'll probably start to look like this cameraman on the far <laughs> left of the screen here he looks pretty wired in this little st <laughs> this little shot yeah. <laughs> so 15 dr peppers later that's where you're at but uh yeah he meets uh Meets old JFK. Yeah. So, which that part's pretty funny. He's he's like, how do you? He's like, can, he's telling every he's congratulating everyone for being an All American, and he's like, congratulations. How do you feel? It's like I gotta pay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's constantly in a pattern of either humiliating the president he's around or himself or both. <laughs> but uh. And he goes over the fact that the Kennedys were shot. Uh, and he's, he gets to be in the military, which uh, this, that little line where the, right when he introduces himself to the bus driver, he gets yelled at. My dad and I would quote that back and forth to each other a lot. Cause I always thought that was really funny. It's like, get your Maggie butt to the back of the bus. You're in the army now. <laughs> He's like, I think I, he's like, I, I started to think I had done something wrong because I, I just got here and I'm already being yelled at. But uh, here we, I'm trying to remember the name of this actor. He's, he has a little bit of a, little bit of a strange name. It's something Williamson. Oh, Mc, McKelletty Williamson. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. funny because he, uh, if you watch the show Justified, he's on that as well, which he's a lot, he's not, he obviously doesn't look anywhere near the same. No. But uh, he is a dang good actor. He, he is, is very good, really very good. good actor. I'd saw I'd already seen him in a, in quite a few things um, before I saw him in this. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, back then you couldn't jump on the computer and check Wikipedia um, when you'd gone to see a movie like I do now. But um, yeah, I was like, oh, I've seen this guy in something. Well, I've seen him in. When I found out who he was later, I was like, my God, he he kind of totally did. You know, he did he did. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio in the uh, in the the, the recent um, Scorsese movie, he kind of scrunched up his face to make it look different. Except here it works, and he doesn't look like some sort of imbecile. Funny enough, uh, there were there were several other actors in consideration. One of them who turned the role down, who ha has said he greatly regrets it, was Dave Chappelle. And and another person who came in an audition for this role was um, Tupac. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He auditioned. I, re I reckon uh, Tupac could have done a good job. You know. Yeah, he, yeah. Tupac's not a bad actor. He's not. Yeah. He was not a bad actor. But yeah, also yeah, this guy he appeared in. Uh, he was in Heat. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, that's he's the driver in Heat, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's he's a really good actor. No, no, I think no, I think I think the driver's actually shown us. I want to say uh, he's one of the cops. Uh, oh yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, he, he's the guy that's got the line. 
uh, they're still not carrying anything, Vincent. Mm -hmm. They're still not carrying anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy who, the guy who drives, um, gets killed in heat is the president from Twenty Four. That actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. David uh, Haysbert or something. I think it's yeah. his name. Yeah, he's a good actor too. I like him. Yeah, he is good. But yeah, uh, Forrest here. He comes into the military and he actually takes to it well because it's you know pretty much just follow follow the basic instructions and that actually. Uh, I, I think this is good. This is an example of the the better side of the writing of this film because it's like this actually makes a lot of sense for his character. Uh, it's there's a lot of routine and repetition that they show in the military, and that's you know right yeah. up his alley. This this fits his skill set. Uh, he's like, why did you put that weapon together so quickly? He's like, you told me to, drill sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> oh goddamn, son. <laughs> <laughs> you're just yeah. waiting for it to be the guy from officer and a gentleman aren't you um who sadly we just lost him but if he'd be if he'd had a cameo in in, in this film as that role that would have been amazing yeah that would have been. <laughs> and also you've got bubba here who's just going through all the different things you can do with shrimp which i, I this always cracked me up like me me my brother and my older sister i think we were like slightly competing to see who could remember every single one of these that he mentions because it's going over like four different it's, it's all the it's all the recipes that his mother's made for him isn't it um, yeah it's uh, it's just the different varieties in which you can prepare shrimp yeah yep. he's got uh, God, I mean, the scene with the toothbrush i forgot about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was um his mum is uh by the way the actress who plays his mum who you only see in those kind of like two shots basically uh, she's like a super, super famous gospel singer on the really? American gospel circuit. Yeah. That's cool. Really big. That. That's cool. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here just to avoid any stuff because I know there's a there's yeah. a wee bit of naked imagery where he gets handed a Playboy and Jenny's in it. And then there's a he sees her in a strip club, but she doesn't think of it for the sexual context. He's more. You know, like, oh, she gets to be a folk singer like she wanted to. It's like, <laughs> yeah. eh, it's not quite what she probably wanted, but that's that's very nice and innocent to you, of you. But it also this this scene after the fact is uh, kind of the first time you see the uh, the darker side of where her life is going, because, you know, yep. she's obviously, you know, working in strip clubs and uh, here she makes her first insinuation that she's suicidal. So uh, and force isn't ignorant to it he kind of understands it. he's like what do you mean by that because she's like you know do you remember when we prayed about god making me a bird do you think i could fly off this bridge and he's like what do you mean and uh so he's you know he's not completely stupid but uh yeah this scene's actually it's it's pretty sad and dark because you have this that happens here and then uh you know she's wanting to get away from him and everything and then you find out, oh, he's leaving for Vietnam, so he could actually go and die. Mm. Uh, which I think this is probably where the audit a lot of people kind of start to turn on Jenny a little bit. Uh, because there's a ton of memes out there, you know, Jenny's the villain and stuff, and I, I do find those pretty funny, but I think there is a grain of more than a grain of truth to the idea that Jen Jenny's not always easy to like or root for. It's like, I mean, I do enjoy a good redemptive arc. Uh, as much as the next person, but uh, yeah, well, I mean, she's kind of she's one of those people that you like her, but she's got a naturally self destructive streak, and she's a bit like a moth. She's drawn to things that are shiny and alluring, but you know, when you get close to them, you get burned. And, and uh, Vex, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> Vex. Yeah, I think. Well, I think what also turns a lot of people against her is the fact that it it ends up being that she she's she misses with Forrest a lot too, is a lot of the stuff she does. It's like, could be seen as kind of cruel <laughs> towards him. You know, I don't think she intends for them to be cruel, but I think she's, uh, I think a lot of people turn on Jenny because, you know, okay, here, here she knows, Oh, he might go and die. And, you know, well, she's still going off to do her own thing. And, you know, I think a lot of people turn on her for reasons like that. Well, I think we all know someone like that. It's like the girl that, you know you like who is unobtainable and you watch mm -hmm. her go out with one bad guy after another who fucks up her life and then ultimately and i know a few people like this and one one comes to mind i'm not going to say a name but ultimately <laughs> these these 
people often end up on their own yeah. wondering wh- why they wasted their life on a whole load of bad boys and then suddenly they find that they're like 50 and single and they own a lot of cats but don't have any kids and aren't married and you know look back at their life and she's she's an allegory for that kind of person basically mm-hmm. um <laughs> The unobtainable girl who sleeps around and catches AIDS. Yeah, well, <laughs> I never say that it's that. In the book, it's hepatitis, but um, yeah, it's hepatitis C. Yeah, but it, but of course, mm. by the time by the time this is this movie was released at the height of the AIDS epidemic, you know, so yeah. not ninety four people, thousands of people were dying every day in America at that time. Um, and one one quick note about here is when we get to the Vietnam scenes, is this is where I think because okay, so Forrest Gump has for my money, one of the best soundtracks of all time. And the Vietnam soundtrack is especially like on display uh, in these scenes. Cause like here when they're flying in, they're playing Creedence Clearwater Revival. I mean, later on you've got a, you know, all the, I mean, you've just got tons of songs that people associate with Vietnam uh, that play throughout here. These are, these are especially good uses of the, uh, of the soundtrack that they've got. They're great. Yeah. Mm. yeah alan semestri go ahead oh yeah alan semestri uh who did uh the music on this uh he wanted the uh period uh songs to sound like they were being played from a radio or from a a separate source within the the soundtrack and then have the the actual orchestral music laid over uh like normal for the emotional beats so that the the sound design was really nice I, i saw they were nominated but they didn't win which I thought was a bit unfortunate because it's really good. Yeah. So these um, these scenes were filmed at um, Hunting Island State Park um, in South Carolina, I think it is. And mm-hmm. um, uh, when you see all the reeds and stuff in the water, you, you, you might recognize that that's also many of the same locations from Dawson's Creek were also shot there. All that stuff out the back of his house, you know, where they're always looking at the nice... Oh, wow, that's the same park as this place. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I was not a watcher of Dawson's Creek, but that is interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was a big fan of that man. Now so. here we get introduced to my favorite character, uh, Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> get Gary Sinise. I think he steals every single scene that he's in. I actually yeah. think his performance is the best in the film. I would agree. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I I love Gary Sinise in this movie. He's great. He is. I mean, right out of the gate, like you know, he's. <laughs> I love the the. What he says to Bubba, he's like, what's wrong with your lip? And he's like, I, I was born with big gums. There's like, you better tuck that in and get that caught on a tripwire. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't it, isn't it now they do that little montage where Forrest goes, his family had a history of dying in war. And it sort of cuts to like five different versions of him getting shot at different battles through history or something. Um, that's a really clever moment in the film. I thought it was really funny. Uh, to answer your question, Vex, uh, Giggles is somebody that uh, has been a long-standing supporter of mine. His channel, he does uh, a lot of gaming stuff, uh, talks manga and stuff like that. But uh, I've watched some of his live stuff, and I wanted to invite him on. But this is actually his very first live show appearance on someone else's channel. So yeah. we are breaking right. him in. And he bought both both his Giggles and his bits. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it. One of his ancestors died in every single American war. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. I love that whole backstory to his character. You know, it's like this tradition. I also, I also love the fact that they tell him that he's that uh, they're from Alabama and stuff like that. And he's like, so you boys are from Arkansas, huh? Oh, I've been <laughs> through there. Little Rock's a fine town. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh yeah, here's the yeah. That's the montage where they show yeah. all of his different family members dying in war, uh, which has a nice payoff to it. It's not an irrelevant detail. No, it's not. Um, because it's, later uh, that changes, of course. Yeah, it's part of his. Uh, you know, it's part of his. Uh, part of his character is he. You find out he kind of believes that dying in battle is something that he's supposed to do. It's like destiny because that's what all of his other family members. Are doing. Oh, that's where my toilet roll went. <laughs> I do love the line he gives them at the end. He's like, "All right, we have two standing rules in this platoon. One, always take care of your feet. Number two, try not to do anything stupid like getting yourself killed." <laughs> Which 
I won't lie, I repeat that advice even out of context very often. Yeah, and I love how Forrest is like, I hope I don't disappoint him. <laughs> He's like, I sure hope I don't let him down. Yeah. They- <laughs> Uh, that's a whole load of digital hills in that shop. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just think they're, they're all that's all digitally added. Yeah, it kind of sticks out a bit now, but I think at the time, mm-hmm. um, I didn't don't think I particularly noticed that that was a, a digital ad. But you're telling me they didn't let them walk through the real Vietnam? Come on, <laughs> uh, afraid not, man. It looks good though. The, the, the production design did a good job here, bringing oh, in a yeah. few, few extra plants and things to. Line the side of the road and that. I also like his little uh, him talking about these various soldiers. He's like there, there was, there was Dallas from Phoenix, Cleveland. He was from Detroit and Tex. Yeah. I don't actually remember where Tex come from. <laughs> 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 but uh, I also love this little shot here because they because he doesn't realize exactly how dangerous it is. Like they give him the gun to check the foxhole, which was. Gosh, I mean that is that was an insanely dangerous thing to do. He just dives right into it, like, okay, that's my yeah. job. I got to dive in. But oh my gosh, lot that was one of the scariest things that you could do is have to check in a foxhole like that, yeah. check inside of a mound to see if anybody's in there because often there was. So you're just the first head that pops out, and it's like, uh oh, they're mm-hmm. gonna grab me. They're gonna kill me. You're stab me. It's like, geez, it'd be terrifying. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, tunnel rats. Uh, mm-hmm. Not a fun job. No. And this is also this is where uh, Bubba has the idea to that they will be a shrimp captain and first mate, split everything 50 50. He's like, that's a oh, fun yeah. idea. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, I like their friendship is, uh, it's, uh, it's one of the better aspects of the film. I do really appreciate yeah, how they, how they handled when... that. When Bubba de- meet, meets his demise, I was proper gutted. I remember yeah. being really sad, man. You really wanted him to make it, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's that's good writing because you were invested in him because they took the time to get you invested in the character. Exactly, so and, they, and he's not loss. even it's not even on the screen for all that long. Maybe about twenty yeah. minutes of screen time total. But uh, yeah, he has a huge impact on the film overall, and. uh I mean, ultimately, the friendship that is born from his death is the friendship with Lieutenant Dan over time. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, Bubba, Bubba's friendship, it really resonates throughout the movie. It's one of the more powerful aspects of it. Yet, strangely, uh, Tom Hanks did not learn this lesson when he made Masters of the Air many moons later. Because uh, uh, <laughs> not invested in anyone who dies in that show. Um, yeah, but hey. Yeah, I do like that line, Boucher. He's like, he started whispering. He'd say, get down, shut up, get down, shut up. So we did. So we did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here uh, we see him take the advice that Jenny gave him that, you know, don't be brave, just run. Of course, now granted, it's they're only half, he only halfway does the advice because he obviously ends up uh, running back and pretty much rescuing everybody. Uh, like rescues just about his entire platoon. Yeah, the, the kid with the glasses. I always remembered him. The big specks on his head. Yeah, yeah. He gets Lieutenant Dan out of there, who is saying, you know, to drop him and stuff. And he his legs are pretty mangled, and uh, he orders in an airstrike and napalm, and then that's finally where uh, finally he finds Bubba and gets him out of there just as they start napalming the area. And uh, yeah, then this is where he dies. Which yeah, like you, it's like this is still a pretty, a pretty sad and gutting moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is this is a pretty sad one because I, I I think I think especially in this movie because you know when you first are watching this, it's such a it's such a sweet natured movie that you don't really consider how death might enter into it. I mean, Jenny, I guess they're sort of hinting that that could happen, but you know, Bubba's such a it's kind of an extension of Forrest in a lot of ways. They're very similar. Yeah. And so he the, dies, the, oh. he's the, he's the brother he never had really, isn't he? Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, like when they're talking about getting on a shrimp boat, you're like, Oh, I can't wait to see that. That's going to be great. And yeah. he dies before it happens. You're like, Oh, that's awful. Yeah. I think, I think Forrest knows immediately when he finds Bubba and he takes that 
that uh, leaf off his stomach. And he's like, Bubba, no. Yeah. It's like he, it's like he knows that, that Bubba's in, in, in really hurt at that moment. And yeah. uh, when you see the Charlie like running in the background, mm-hmm. uh, I remember the audience like gasping. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a tense scene and it, it, it pays off really, really well. And yeah, it still guts me today. That I scene. would still, I would also say it's, um, it, this movie does push the line between PG 13 and R. I think, I mean, I would imagine that they took this before MPAA. They, they only just got away with it, uh, which was very much to the film's benefit given how much money it made. But, uh, yeah, this, this movie does push the bounds of an R rating, uh, cause the, uh, some of the wounds they show are fairly graphic. Yeah. And, uh, I remember. There's a pretty decent amount of profanity too. There's a bit of sexuality. It's like they, it, this is a pretty, it's about as hard as most PG 13 movies would go, but uh, it's effective. It's very effective how it's done. Mm. How <laughs> I do you love this part? He's like, Lieutenant Dan, I brought you some ice cream. Ice cream. Lieutenant Dan, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do love that. Yeah. Uh, Jenny walking off screen. Yeah, well, I mean, now Jenny, here's the thing, and I noticed, I never noticed this watching it before HD. So there is that scene where they're in the strip club, and you think that she's completely naked. She actually is wearing. Uh, she's got a body. She's stocking wearing. On. She's wearing mm-hmm. bottoms that yeah. are just skin colored. But I mm-hmm. never could tell watching it, you know, on VHS or whatever, but or on DVD really, but. In, you probably weren't supposed to tell. Yeah, time. you probably weren't. But yeah, yeah, in high def, you can tell. It's like, oh, okay, she actually has something on. But uh, yeah. Yeah, Lieutenant Dan, he's lost his legs. And you can tell he's just severely depressed over it because he, you know, he wanted to die. And this, by the way, this is uh, how you learn Ginny's last name, Curran. Mm. And her address. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it was her former address. But yeah, he wrote to her a lot. Yeah. Uh, I did kind of wonder. It's like, Forrest, you know, she just kind of took off. Where'd you, where was he? It's like, why would you send them? It's like, I guess he was just, he was just sending them to her house, I suppose. But mm-hmm. obviously she wasn't getting them. But uh, also here is where he starts to learn uh, how to play ping pong, which uh, really, I, I thought this was a nice uh, attention to detail, but he's, his instruction from the guy is, you know, the whole key to this game is never take your eye off the ball. And during the ping pong scenes, uh, Tom Hanks never blinks. So True. I thought that was a uh, thought that was pretty cool. Well, uh, but then in a, in a lot of these scenes, the ping pong is CGI. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's he's obviously not a great he's not that good of a ping pong player or anything. Yeah, these are this is a digital ping pong ball. But it's just the fact that he managed to. And he made sure it's like, I got to keep my eyes open because he he would take that instruction to the utmost seriousness that, hey, don't take your eye off. It's like, OK, well, I can't blink then. But yeah, here, uh, Lieutenant Dan is uh, he's angry at him. He's like, I had a destiny. He's like, do you know what it's like not to be able to use your legs? And he's like, well, yes, sir, I, I do. <laughs> and he's like, did you hear what I said? But uh it's it's this scene that got to me a bit too because i mean you know dan it's you're learning that uh that tradition in their family he took seriously he did see that as his destiny to die in battle you know kind of die the warrior's death go out on his shield and you know he's been robbed of that and yeah he's high he's highly bitter about it feels shameful yeah. about it oh, mm-hmm. you know yeah which gosh the arc they create from just from that detail it's so good it, it's and it's it's aged really well like i really noticed that a lot watching it today i was like gosh I, I really love his arc and he's yeah he's definitely my favorite character in this i love what they do with him yeah yeah me too but uh yeah here they uh he gets awarded the congressional medal of honor uh for rescuing all those people and he's uh he was shot in the butt. <laughs> he's like, it's like I hear you were wounded. Where were you hit? He's like in the butt talk, sir. I'm like, wow, that must be quite a sight. I'd like to see that. And he actually pulls his pants down and shows him. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's funny. I, I now this part, I always was like, how did he end up with these people? I mean, he's on. I guess he's just on the bus with them, but he ends up at this. Uh, you know, bring our troops home kind of rally, uh, kind of an anti-war rally. 
Um, no, he was there. He was taking a picture of the monuments and that bus was unloading mm -hmm. and they just thought he was a part of the group and just lumped him into the line. Yeah. That's, I mean, running. that's what I figured. Yeah. Is he just ended up lumped in with these people and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I mean, it's, it's more, I'm looking at it from their perspective. I'm just like, well, if y'all didn't plan to have this guy, why would you have him speak? You know, you don't know. It's like, he hasn't prepared anything, <laughs> but uh, it is, it's pretty funny. You get the guy on stage and he's like, he liked to say the F word a lot. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, did. I like this scene. I thought it was quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. They, they mm -hmm. first, he, he gets the plug pulled on him. So you never quite hear what he says. I know there's a little bit of a transcript of what he says. And it's, uh, it's something like, uh, some, some of the people like went home without their legs. Some didn't come home at all. And that's, that's too bad or something along those lines. But, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Jenny, who this, I don't think is too, I mean, some people are like, eh, this might be a bit of a stretch. She would be here at this time. I'm like, ah, she heard protesting at an anti-war rally like this. I could see that being yeah, I, I something don't think she would do. It's not a stretch. It's, it's fine. Yeah. I, I, I'm like this, you know, for a movie that is very much fantastical in nature, I do think this fits. And, uh, oh, look at this. He's here, right on time. Ah, well, that's good because I got to duck out in five. So yeah, I, I figured we were perfect, getting close. To perfect, the... sh perfect shift change. Uh, well, synchronicity. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, are you things. still? Are you? Are you compass mentis? Yeah, I'm. I'm all fucked up, and I haven't showered in five <laughs> days. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Perfect. Um, I decided to just come straight home and just go straight live, and then maybe after this, I'll jump into uh, Gucci's channel at the last minute and. Mm -hmm. Say hello there. Quick, everybody uh, in the chat, yes or no? Can you <laughs> smell can you smell stupenzo from where you're at? <laughs> no, I still smell good. I was taking a lot of horse baths out there with the uh, wet wipes and shit like that. I'm brushing my teeth and everything. I'm not like a filthy degenerate or anything, but yeah, there's no showers out there. I mean, I, you know, what am I supposed to do? I but, think I miss I misheard what you said then, but but I'll a horse bath. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, you I heard didn't it right. miss it. I, I heard it correctly. Okay. Jenny knows right. about him. Um, <laughs> look, she, here's she's kind of taking one now. She's kind of taking one now. First Forest. of all, um, one of my favorite quotes you guys uh, didn't touch on. There's a lot of them, but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's earlier on when uh, you know young Jenny sneaks into Forrest's uh, house and sleeps with him when he's a child, and it's because she said she's scared, and he's like, "Scared of what? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was her do her grandma's dog. She was a mean <laughs> dog. He's so stupid. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> anyway." Um, I like to think this movie is a better comedy than it is. Uh, the drama stuff is a little heavy handed and yeah, I it's a bit, it's a bit saccharine. Yeah. yeah. And, and what you guys were talking about earlier about Jenny and, and Lieutenant Dan, especially, I think those, those two obviously represent, you know, I mean, Forrest kind of says as much at the end, but it's like, yeah, the dichotomy of, you know, everything happening for no reason. Everything's just random. We're just kind of going with the flow or like Lieutenant Dan says, there's like a set destiny. That everything mm -hmm. follows upon. And it's like Forrest says, you know, maybe it's both. That's like my favorite quote from this movie that I quote all the time. Maybe it's both. <laughs> both happening at the same time. One of your um, one of your guys from Die Hard is in this Black Panther scene. The Johnson and Johnson guy. Remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's in. He's one of the Panthers. I do. I do love that Forrest thinks this is a Black Panther party, not yeah. the Black Panther party. Right. I think that's a. It's a little funny. Like they don't. They don't highlight the fact that he thinks of these, but it's just the way he says. I'm sorry, I had a fight in the middle of your Black Panther party. It's like, oh, right. he actually thinks it's just a party. Right. He ruined the punch, <laughs> you know, with the real punch. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing. I, I feel for Forrest here. Like even if you know, you have a good friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, she she's dating some asshole. It's like, dude, no, you you ain't gonna slap Jenny in front of Forrest and get away with that. No. <laughs> hmm. yeah. Lance, uh, are you gonna? Or do you want to go ahead and? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna duck out. I've just wanted to. You you may mention this in the trivia, but as I am a scriptwriter, I'm gonna say it now. Um, one thing I've got to call um, call up Hanks and. Uh, Zemeckis on uh, on this film is that Winston Groom, who wrote the book, um, who you know he he got paid three hundred and fifty thousand for the screenplay rights. Okay, that's not a small paycheck, but 
he was also contracted to get three percent um share of the film's net profits okay and tom hanks as you pointed out earlier took a cut when the film went over budget and he ended up with a, a 40 million dollar bonus hollywood did that creative accounting thing yep. and they cheated winston out of his money now that would have been bad enough but on the oscars keeping in mind the number of wins that this got not a single one of the people who went up and did their speeches mentioned the novel or thanked him which is bullshit mm -hmm. um and i i i think you know every film starts with an idea or a story that that always comes from one person originally they should be the first person that you thank because otherwise you've got no movie so i um i take particular umbrage with that and um they should have rectified that in the end how that was addressed was because he threatened to take them to court so they paid him off a different way they basically um negotiated a deal because he wrote a sequel to the book um right, right gump and company the, yeah yeah and and uh gup, gup and co yeah and and they basically paid him an obscene amount i think it was about seven hundred and fifty thousand for that still way less than he would have actually got on the oh point. yeah three percent of the net profit should have <clears throat> gotten him quite a lot of money yeah and and you know and that film was deliberately put into turnarounds and it was blacklisted and never made because they didn't want to because hollywood's they're cunts like that they they basically are not forgiving and so they were never gonna make that sequel yeah um i think they did look many moons later they did look at it and they were talking about doing it and then 9 11 happened and hanks turned around and said after 9 11 there was no point doing a second forrest gump movie um what what his entire reasoning for that was is not clear to me but um yeah but i just say uh, overall though i still really love this film mm -hmm. um particularly <coughs> as you've pointed out many times one of the things that makes the film so strong is the supporting cast the guts of the cast as as a producer will will often say if you get that casting right the rest of the film will take care of itself and it's not like they need to carry hanks or anything he's amazing but they're just so so good they're so on par with him and gary mm -hmm. sinise yeah steals the film um so i give forrest gump probably a <coughs> probably give it a nine out of ten i think um you know and i i don't have a problem with the way the film's aged if anything i think it's 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 good it's the kind of innocence thing of it works really well in this current very cynical we can't offend anyone at all for anything era mm -hmm. it's quite good that this this was a film that took a lot of risks and that alone gets it a big double thumbs up from me so and that's all i gotta say about that <laughs> oh, nice but did you um, uh did you want to plug anything or oh me and uh the guys are on with shogun tomorrow at 10 p.m uk time 5 p.m east coast we're doing episode eight so um yeah it's um it's been a great show really enjoying doing that and then i'm doing um i'm doing a special on ed zwick's first movie um in two weeks special bulletin you can see the whole film on youtube i, I never even knew he directed it until i got his biography so that's going to be interesting and i might be doing something this sunday on hillsborough because the anniversary is on monday so I'm going to be talking about that because I, that's my first play. The first ever play I did in the theatre was about Hillsborough, um, our big football soccer disaster where tragic, big tragedy. But there's a there's been a movie made about that and a drama, TV drama. So I might be doing a whole kind of Hillsborough special on Sunday, still trying to see who I can get on for it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's it. So glad Enzo had a good time. Giggling bits. Uh, lovely to meet you, man. You're welcome on my channel anytime. And Gord, thanks for inviting me again. And I'm sorry I got to duck out early, but uh, I've got an early start. So. Oh, you're you're totally okay. Th uh, I appreciate you being here. I assume probably everybody in the chat uh, supports your channel, but if you don't, head over to the Outcast Creative. And if you are somebody who is checking out the stream and you're unfamiliar with Lance, uh, you can find the link to his channel in the description for the show head on over there 
does great interviews, uh, really good mm-hmm. breakdowns of various stuff, and you'll occasionally catch me there as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, again, thank you for being here, Lance, and you no, have, yourself, uh, uh, have yourself a good sleep. <laughs> I, I will do my best. All right, take care, guys. Enjoy the rest. Later, Lance. Later. So right. now at the halfway point, mm-hmm. we have traded out the sleepy British man <laughs> for an Italian guy who's hopped up on stimulants. Let's do it. <laughs> nice. And Boosh, I assume this is the look you were talking about that he gives uh, yeah. Ginny's white Black Panther party boyfriend, which I agree. The look he gives him is just it's great. It's yep. like, Forrest is quite the clam jam for Jenny. I mean, he... Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, because I mean, earlier when you were talking about uh, during the Frogman song, when he beats up that guy in the rain at the at high school or whatever college, that's just like you, you assume that's that's Jenny's ex boyfriend. You know, you have no idea that's just her childhood, you know, retard friend. It's even scarier, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yeah, that is that probably is a little scary. He's like, oh my gosh, a boyfriend like, makes I... sense. Some guy makes much less sense. It's, mm-hmm. it's not worth the risk. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, Jenny. See you later. Nope. Maybe you should date that forest guy, is what I tell her. Yeah. Well, here he ends up where we get to see how his uh, his ping pong uh, has become, you know, a pretty uh, pretty big thing for him. So he's getting to go over to the land of China and uh, play Chinese ping pong China. over there. Which, if you ever watch Chinese people play ping pong, it's pretty insane. So yep. the idea of him being able to uh, hold his own against the Chinese in ping pong is kind of nuts. Yeah, but yeah. He's... I mean, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say the scenes where he's uh he encounters uh John Lennon. Simi gives him part of the idea for the song Imagine, which by yeah. the way I don't particularly like that song. I think that song's kind of basically garbage, writes but... the whole song. <laughs> yeah, my favorite John Lennon song yeah. is "A Woman Is the N Word of the World." That song rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking though. That's oh no, has, like, that's that is a song section. You're like, dude, this is a great song, and then the lyrics come in. You're like, what? Like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, John Lennon. I mean, get and then yeah, the classic line he says like three or four times for for no particular reason. Somebody shot that nice young man. You know, uh, he seems to I, think that people get shot for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, and then for whatever reason, Yoko Ono started singing. <laughs> yeah, or screaming. Yeah, yeah Lieutenant Dan's, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> physical appearance change is so stark right here. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. his uh, He looks, he borderline looks like a wizard from Harry Potter, like serious Black. Uh, yeah. That's who you really I mean, reminds. I'd imagine this is what real, real life wizards look like. You know, they're in a wheelchair in an alley covered in, you know, s- grease, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, they gave you an imbecile who goes on TV and makes a fool of himself in front of the whole country, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Yes, sir, yeah. they did. Well, that's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, he'd rather get like some kind of posthumous, uh, award for dying valiantly in in the field than have mm-hmm. his friend you know get the medal of honor for saving his life you know he's oh. he's so jaded i love here they they recreate the uh midnight cowboy line he like he literally says i'm walking here while he's being pushed in a wheelchair yeah. <laughs> also wouldn't this movie that movie have come out like you know a little bit after this or before this movie i mean what what came Let's, first that scene or that's a good movie. question. It, yeah, it would have been probably around 1980, so it would have been a little bit after, I think. Okay. Midnight Cowboy was in the 70s, I think. But yeah, yeah this scene right here reminds me of when um, yeah, I was a little kid and we'd hang out with my Uncle Dino. You know, he's just he's sitting there like <laughs> drinking at the TV. Yeah, the Midnight Cowboy tired. actually was 1969, so yeah, it would have been a bit after. A bit after. Oh, that. okay. So he's actually quoting Lieutenant Dan is is referencing the movie Urban Cowboy. Mm-hmm. I bet you around the yeah, 1970s, like everyone was just saying, I'm walking here, you know, yeah. <laughs> probably it, that was like the, uh, you know, I'm Rick James, bitch of the 70s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like this, uh, this little parties. He's like, have you found Jesus yet? I don't know. I was supposed to be looking for him. So, <laughs> yeah. And, but, and uh, the gets a kick out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's I, I love it. Cause like, not like most every scene of, of, uh, Lieutenant Danza's character building and built it's it's to going along a very uh interesting but very direct arc. Like it's like yeah. ever it's like really every scene has something to do with the arc he's going on here. It's like you get the religious aspect of it where you know he's very much uh 
bitter at God for the station of his life. You know, he's, yeah. and he believed in destiny and he, but here he's like, you know, all these other cripples are like talking about finding Jesus. And uh, also, I mean, the thing, the other things I really love about this movie that really gets, you know, obviously the special effects are pretty groundbreaking, but like, for instance, like when he throws the bottle and he's like, do you hear what I said? Walk mm -hmm. with him in the kingdom of heaven. Like this camera just dollies in on him like real tight. And it's just such yeah. a, you know, some great stuff like that. Little things like that. Um, great, uh, you know, great special effects shot that you don't know are special effects shots, you know. And I mean, the mm -hmm. whole thing with his legs was like a big deal. How they did that. Yeah. Uh, you know, all that stuff is really good. The, the soundtrack is obviously, we, we, I know you touched on that, but it's like two or three CDs. Long. It's like an hour and a half long of music. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then. Yeah, it was like they had an idea to just play, you know, a score. But yeah, like uh, Alvin Silvestri, it's just like just playing this diegetic, like period piece music was such a good move. And I think that like many, many, many historical movies copied that. Just like how many uh, cop movies copied that voiceover stuff from Goodfellas. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. This is like super heavy soundtrack. So great. I also and, love uh, uh, the line because it... Uh... That he's got here he's like you know the day you become a shrimp boat captain and that's the day i'll, I'll be your yeah. first mate which obviously they there's a payoff to that but also he says that's the day i become an astronaut and like right. like a year later they did apollo 13 together <laughs> although now, funny uh, enough he didn't get to be an astronaut till after the fact uh, he's also an astronaut in mission to mars um that's, yes that's true mm -hmm. But also the other thing is interesting. I know Lance was like, you know, talking about like the book, the writer getting shafted. Uh, but the thing is, and I, I this is a nose kinda... on this chick. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. I mean, still would. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, you, you don't have to look at her from the side. <laughs> it's bad. I'd rather date a girl with a big nose than a girl who had a big nose. You know well, what I mean? There's, there's good kinds of big, a, a prominent nose can be quite yes. attractive. It's just, it's the shape of her nose. That's a little. Stop eek. getting nose jobs. That's like. Exactly. Oh, there there are women that. who have large noses where it's actually extremely attractive, but. There's so her, many uh, parts little, right here though, that like Lieutenant well, Dan, you know, is my spirit animal, you know? <laughs> yeah he's... he's like when when he's sad when the when the ball drops he's all alone and also mm -hmm. later in this uh hotel scene and the stuff before like he's just so <clears throat> you know it's like when i was like a young living in austin you know struggling as a musician you know <clears throat> get all jaded it's easy yeah on this also it's intercutting between them and the new years that jenny's having because he's thinking about her right uh yeah here's <laughs> this is where tense I think a lot of our New Year's spirit animal were just like, uh, we're so, I, I think this is this is where a lot of us get after about 30, where we're like, oh, no, yeah, <laughs> another <real>. New Year. <laughs> where did the whole year go? We have another another year of resolutions that we have failed. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> she tastes like cigarettes is another great line. I love very yeah. much. But <laughs> do you think it's not that Forrest is, uh, you know, what is he queer or something? You know, is your friend stupid? I think it's more just like, yeah, he's in love with Jenny. He's kind of like monogamous with her, which is a, a little stalkery. But I think also like, yeah, she does taste like cigarettes. Like he's just not into her. Like, he want, he wouldn't want. I don't think Forrest would want a girl like Jenny. Or like yeah, this, I, I or think like I think here. this scene especially, it's more just he's not into her. It's and the tasting like cigarettes, he's just like, mm, that's that's gross too. But yeah, I yeah. think in this case, it's more just he's not into her. Yeah, Forrest. If she smokes, she pokes, buddy. But uh, that being said, I got to <laughs> say this part is amazing when Lieutenant Dan snaps because you understand, like, he calls him stupid all the time. He calls him insults to his face, but he did, you know, save his life. So if anyone else insults him, like he gets really, really sensitive about it. Uh, yeah, because it's well, well, because from his perspective, it's like he's he knows Forrest. So there's a difference between. Like he's not fully trying to call him stupid. He's more just he's told him, you know, you've made a fool of yourself and stuff like that. But, it could uh, also be this like pride thing he has, because not only did he get his life saved, I'm not trying to be funny here, but it's like he got his life saved from a stupid person, like a, a, yeah. an, a, a, a literal imbecile yeah. proved to be a better you know, soldier than he was, you know, which is like, you know, how does that affect his psyche and his self-esteem? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, man. Lieutenant Dan's a pretty tragic character. I love him. Yeah. Who all? Yeah. Who ultimately? You know, I think, like I said, I, I, I think he has the best arc. He's my favorite character of the film. I. He's also set um, Dan uh, uh, Gary Sinise on his whole, you know, uh, personal journey of, uh, 
you know, raising money for veterans and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, so this character literally has like made the world better, you know, measurably. It's fun yeah. to think about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Sinise actually um, was on that path He's like well before that with uh, working cool. with veterans and talking to veterans. And this movie was just something he, he was almost in platoon. Uh, but ah. didn't uh, didn't get that one because the funding fell through the first time he was cast. And uh, so when he got this role, he was just like all about it. And uh, he wanted to do it justice because he knew veterans that were treated this way. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, he, incredible. Just incredible. All you know, it's another really badass Gary Sinise movie, Imposter. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> that seen that. That's rules. <laughs> it's like a made for TV sci-fi film and it's so good. I will say this of all of the historical things that they insert for us into, I think this is the funniest one for us. Uh, caused the water gates. Yeah. That he basically <laughs> like in, in, you know, kudos to them for this attention to historical detail was the fact that the person who answers on this, on the line uh, is the actual name of the security officer who, uh, yeah. who did break Watergate. But uh yeah, it, it was funny because when I was a kid, I did not know what the heck this was. I was like, okay, exactly. I don't, I didn't understand the significance of this at all. I understood the significance of pretty much all of the other historical things, but Watergate, I didn't know the details of it. So him calling about this made no, didn't mean anything to me, but now growing up knowing that this is so funny that he's like, God, oh, these guys are like, you know, waving their flashlights on. It's keeping me awake. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's... But it's also a great testament to like, you know, they don't hold your hands and ex over explain every little thing. There's so many uh, other little things that you don't notice, like the whole imagine writing the lyrics to that. Like, you don't I didn't notice that until like, well, until like my later years. Yeah. But yeah. These this Watergate thing. It's not like, yeah, if you don't know what it is, the TikTok generation will have no idea what this is talking about. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, here he gets a uh, discharge. He he steals his army ping pong paddle, which I thought that was kind of. He gives that little suck. He's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> Just takes off. Yeah, this part it's funny because you know now that I'm a little older and know politics a little better, I'm like, oh wow, she took money for him to you know advertise the Gump Mao table tennis. Session. She she was wow. already selling his rights. Well, you know. These aren't like prototypes or anything. This is something that they had already been doing <laughs> yeah. without his knowledge because she basically probably claims it as a dependent or whatever. Um, uh, yeah. And the other thing that's so funny about all that is like, you know, Forrest. <laughs> uh, this is like, yes, Sorry, <laughs> uh, not, not, not too long. I didn't, not the first time I watched it, but probably the second or third time I realized, oh, he did that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get that either when I was a kid. I rented this movie like when I was 10 years old on Blockbuster, heard it, hearing all the hype about it. Yeah, everyone loves it. Um, but yeah, back to like the whole uh, Sally Field's house full of uh, memorabilia. This is what happens when Gord gets like, you know, millions of subs and he goes home to like his mom and she's got all this like Gord King crap everywhere, you know, and memorabilia she's signed off. We've been very busy. What why does why does the shirt have my have have my emblem on the Chinese flag? What's going on here? Gord King cereal. Think about it, son. It's pumpkin flavored. C C C G K. What what the heck? What's going on here? <laughs> uh, yeah, he, oh yeah, talking to Bubba. Yeah, he's talking to Bubba. He's gonna get to his uh he's got his shrimp boat, which uh he does not have a single clue what he's doing. Then uh, he names the boat. I love Jenny. how he tells uh, Bubba's, uh, you know, spirit that he has a shrimp boat. He says it like so, like mischievously, like, oh, oh, by the way, I might have gotten a new shrimp boat. And he's like looking <laughs> left and right and stuff. He's all like biting his lip, you know? Yeah. And I'm he's talking like, to nobody, Forrest. <laughs> You're just talking to a field. It's great. <laughs> oh, and the fact that he's, uh, He's he's telling me about the ping pong paddle thing. He goes, which you know everybody knows is true. Mom says it's a little white lie. I'm not gonna hurt nobody. It's like right. you know, he's like, I'm a, I like my own paddle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll say this, this scene actually, uh, as far as getting like this is actually a pretty intense scene. Like her, yeah. Because uh, I mean, I yeah, it, this one it, it it hit me pretty hard the first time I saw it. I was like, oh wow. It's like I knew she was a bit suicidal, but them actually yeah. showing her going to this. Uh, to this point, uh, it, it's kind of a turning point for her because this is kind of the first. Yep. This is the last time you see her before she and uh, Forrest reunite, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah this, her rock. Right, don't you guys hate it when you're like partying with a girl and you go to sleep before her, and then next thing you know, like 
she's like trying to kill herself in your in your house without your knowledge i mean it's such a it's so annoying yeah it's that. almost cliche how many times it's happened to me but also the whole free bird song it's like is that cliche or and try hard or is it actually clever you know i i, I don't know i go back and forth on that I, I would I, say I, in at this particular point, in, uh, I would I would say it's relatively clever. I think it's a really good usage of the song. I think it for sure adds some intensity to the moment. Uh, yeah, because it's there's you know it's going through that hectic you know segment of the song, and that's you know you imagine that's kind of mentally where she's at, you know, yeah. and then it starts to fade as she starts to you know exhale a bit and come back down off of a. Uh, you know, her high and come down off of this. I, I think, you know, all you know, slipping on that ledge sobered her up a bit. On know. tonight's VH1 Behind the Music episode of Jenny Curran. <laughs> I was hanging outside. I uh, decided to just fly away on the like a bird. <laughs> Jesus. I do. I, I'm a little confused at how. OK, so he, he leaps off his boat, which is going one way. And then by the time they're done, the boat swings back and crashes right maybe the boat did a full circle almost yeah it literally it was like i was like whoa 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 it's like either way how does that happen exactly they do do a shot of the they do do a shot of the the wheel as it's like it's like turning as he's like shouting at uh lieutenant dan yeah foreshadow that it's a little (laughs) it's a real boat crashing into a real dock or or was that just really good cg you know i don't know it it looks i think that cg looks real Let's see. It looks, it looks real, but looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, but don't you be thinking. All right, let's hang on once. I'm gonna be calling you, sir. Uh, oh, that's yeah, and that's a great part too, where he's like, he has to call him sir and shit. You know, he doesn't have to. <laughs> he just, you know, it would feel weird to not call Lieutenant Dan sir. Yeah. All right, let's see if how how it looks. The fact that there's smoke, and that looks real. Also, the dock is just floating in the water. Uh, yeah. Who knows? My boat. <laughs> That's if, my it boat. Is, if it isn't real for 1994 with the smoke in the foreground, too, like, man, that's impressive. If it is a, a, an effect shot. Yeah, Bush says uh, there's a lot a of good effect shots. Like, fake dock. So. I know you're talking about the editing on um, the car chase at the beginning when they're playing the Rebel Rally song. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like Forrest is digitally like they're shot in two different uh, takes, you know, and they're digitally imposed. Uh, Bush says it's a real boat and a fake dock, which would make sense. Yeah, maybe, probably. Okay, here, uh, this is also this is uh, kind of completing his kind of war with God arc where, you know, he's first he's telling Forrest, well, maybe you should pray for shrimp because they're not catching anything. But then uh, he. uh they still don't catch anything. He's like, where's this God of yours? And he's like, oh, it's funny. It's funny that he said that because it was about he thought this time God showed up and he's yelling at him saying, you'll never sink this boat. And uh, <laughs> funny enough, he doesn't sink the boat, but every other shrimp boat goes and he's pretty much all they're all that's left. So now they just they're catching everything, you know? Yeah. And he's and this is where he's like, it's like, you're telling me you're you're the owner of the Bubba Gump shrimp. I mean, cor- you know, corporation. He's like, yes, sir. We yeah. got more money than Davy Crockett. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, the fat guy knows who he is, obviously, you know. Ugh. Although, okay, so this begins probably one of my biggest beefs with this movie uh, to a certain extent. It's like, okay, so I don't mind that they don't know his face, but once he tells them, it's like, okay, this guy realized, all right, this guy's famous, you know, and now granted, he thinks it's preposterous, but then, you know, he shows the magazine and they're like, okay, this guy's super duper famous. When he's doing his long distance run later in the film, they only know him. It's like the news is just calling him a gardener and he's otherwise considered yeah. anonymous. And I'm like, okay, come on. That's you're stretching. You're, you're straining credulity a little bit too much for my taste. It, it really annoyed me. Cause I was like, no, he's, he's somebody that you would know. It's like, you all would, it's like, oh, wow. The guy who, started the Bubba Gump Shrimp Corporation, who's been an All-American, who's met the president three times. Holy cow, he's actually on a long-distance run. Isn't that interesting? It's like, you all would know who he is. That yeah, really grated on my nerves. <laughs> the reporters are just terrible in the 80s, or they just don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe it was before the whole Paris Hilton, you know, celebrity worship, where we had to know where, what all the celebrities were doing 24-7. We just let celebrities be in peace. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bush is, is insinuating that the fat guy on the bus is like being sarcastic when he's saying like, "Oh, we're sitting next to him. like he's he doesn't believe him." 
Like we're not. No, no, it's not, I'm crazy. not saying I'm, I'm not. I don't have an issue with that guy not knowing. I'm, but I because that guy to an extent knows who he is. He knows. Oh, I'm not saying he yeah, knows the, the I, he understands the idea of that of person. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. have an issue with that guy. I don't. I don't mind him thinking this is not that person. But he's aware that <sighs> of Bubba Gump Shrimp. He's aware that there's a person who is a millionaire who would own that. The news not knowing later in the film who he is bugged the crap. <laughs> so I was like, of well, course you all would yeah. know who he is. <laughs> who else? Who else? Who else has this part as their favorite part of this movie right here? This is, yeah, this, this is, is, I was just about to say, this yeah. is uh, one of my favorite parts, maybe my favorite part, because, yeah, he's, you know, it, it closes a huge aspect of his arc, you know, like Force says, he makes his peace with God. He's, he actually thanks him for saving his life because his life is good. And he's, actually, he doesn't. He just says, I never think. <laughs> well, yeah, he says that. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. but he thanks him in his own way. Yeah, I know. But he's, uh, um, yeah, yeah. He's, his life is good. And he realized if he didn't save me, I wouldn't have this life I have. It's, it's a really beautiful, well earned moment. Yeah. But of course, here he's, <laughs> it's like he's getting a call and they're, you know, they got their little bubblegum hats on. But yeah, he finds out that his, his mom is sick. And she's got the cancer. Which, oh, it sure straightened you out, you bimble boy. <laughs> it's funny, is in No Country for Old Men when uh, Carla Jean's mother is saying, I've got the cancer. It's like, are they intentionally alluding to Forrest Gump here? Because <laughs> Forrest calls it the cancer, or is that just how Southerners talk? <laughs> yeah. So, I've, I mean, I'm. The Kentucky's kind of where I grew up was kind of half Southern, half Midwestern. I never knew anybody who called it the cancer. The big C. We, we dropped the, the. Texas. we just, we were like, drop the, the just cancer. It's cleaner. Just, you know, yeah, just call it. Yeah. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cancer is so much cooler. If you don't get, if you don't say the. Yeah. The cancer sounds kind of too formal, you know, I would say. It's probably yeah. I would probably agree. Fermented. It's probably his best role. I don't think it's his best film though. I think Apollo thirteen is a way better movie than this. You guys are gonna hate me, but my favorite role for for, for uh, Tom Hanks is uh, the Lady Killers. Because really? it's the only movie where I forget it's Tom Hanks. It's it's <laughs> it's the professor. Really? He literally like becomes that character, and it's such a silly ass movie. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love. I've never seen though. their version. What was that? It's good. I love Philadelphia. I think that's. That's my favorite of the Tom Hanks films. Can I uh, tell you guys a funny story? When we were out there this weekend, high on uh, mushrooms, I kept, I was talking about like a crossover between this movie and Philadelphia. So I just kept like saying like, you know, well, you could argue stuff. this. It's like, it's, it's just the alternate universe version. You know, instead of yeah, a, a gay guy giving him like, AIDS, uh, Jenny does. I was like, I, I'm pretty tired. I think I go dive AIDS now. <laughs> shit like that constantly and it was getting a laugh out of us because you know we were high but yeah there was a lot of them it was a great crossover to think of like have the two tom hanks like meet that'd be that'd be quite the social media site. i can't wait <laughs> like a dating yeah, site people i can make weird stuff like that <laughs> they could call it the terminal list <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant I'm, Dan I don't had, mean. Uh, had family members who had died of AIDS in every single <laughs> great American war. <laughs> Just, you know, there's a lot of them. Oh, man. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. Well, this is where... Well, no, Jenny hasn't come out. That's where he imagines her. Yeah, he has the dream, oh, uh, the phantom uh, Jenny. That stuff's great, man. And he just, like, yeah. sitting alone in his big house in his pajamas. And then she actually then one day she was back. there. Yeah. Yeah. And she does show yeah. up because he's fine because you know, not not nothing to do with him being financially said. And the only responsibility he has is to cut grass. Now, I'm sure that has nothing to do with it. But your mama died. You inherited a house and you're a shrimp billionaire. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't Barbara. mind if I uh, just pay an unannounced visit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's I I get they're They're not presenting it that way. Obviously, it's just, you know, she's the thing uh, is people change you know and you know i tell you man i've hung out with plenty of groupies and rock assholes rock stars and shit musicians and it doesn't take long for them to uh realize like holy shit i'm doing i'm parted too hard man and then they start wearing sweaters and that's having true. kids did invest in and Apple. that's right cleaning up their lives and it's great and that's probably what jenny did she's just she partied too hard she probably had way too many scares and yeah she realized you know what 
Is that nice guy that I uh, always knew growing up who is super mega rich? Should probably give that a try. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Force is always like the most stable part of her life. So yeah. like her going back to that is always sort of like a sounding board for her. At least she's not a single mother in this part of the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that would be... Uh... <laughs> It's uh, my yeah. It's I I like the idea of a redemption arc for her character. It's just I think they could have worked on certain details to make it more palatable because it's like, you know, I'm I I think most people my like I said, the, there's the memes of her being the villain, and I do think those are funny because I think there's a grain of truth to them. Uh, Here's the I thing. know what the movie's going for, and I I think for the most part I'm fine with it, but at the same time I'm like, eh, there's a couple of things y'all probably could have done. To make that a little bit more palatable because it's like, you know, she, you know, she just up and leaves him, you know, not too long after this, you know, she well, here's the went thing years about without love, telling him about his own son. It's like, oh, dang, that's kind of messed up. You, Everybody's right, basically. Jenny is a whore, but also <laughs> Forrest can love whoever the fuck he wants, including mm -hmm. his whore best friend. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. there's like nothing's wrong here. Well, no, it's uh, like from I mean, from Forrest's perspective, it's like it's it's fine. It's like we get it from his perspective. It's 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 cool. But uh, you're like, gosh, we really wish you'd find. It's like 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 here you're kind of like, wow, her saying that you don't want to marry me. It's like, oh, that's probably it's like yeah, that's true. He, he shouldn't. And this is probably where you should be like, I, I need to leave here. But now I'm going to sleep well, with him first, <laughs> possibly give him AIDS and get pregnant. Funny enough. And not going to see you again for another few years. Now, granted, she goes to get her life in order, and that's fine. But it's like, I think you could have said something. Or maybe you shouldn't have slept with him here. <laughs> I think it's like she's kind of just taking him for granted. And when he says something like that, she does kind of realize. I think she does just pity fuck him. Now, here's kind of <laughs> my little uh, my little fan theory. Um, whether it's HIV or hepatitis, whatever deadly virus uh, Jenny gets. I think Forrest actually gave it to her because we insinuate, we think, we assume that he is a virgin. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing that says that he didn't lose his virginity to some Saigon whore in Vietnam. <laughs> so it could be possible that he is patient zero and he's the one who's spreading the hepatitis because then she, Jenny goes off infected. She's patient. She's the first infected person, you know? Hey, he, I mean, he was in Asia. Maybe he got like COVID-17 or something, you know, maybe yeah. that's what she got. You never know. Well, the reason why, yeah, but any man who's ever, you know, felt this way that Forrest does, it's like, yeah, just go run forever. You know, it sounds yeah, just, pretty awesome. Just get moving, <laughs> go running. Yeah, he just he just takes off. It's like, screw this. <laughs> Granted, nobody seems to remember it that he ever did it, but and nobody knew who he was while he did it, apparently. Uh, but that's it's fine. a metaphor, bro. No, <laughs> but yeah, but but honestly, yeah, this is a sequence that I'm like, because it's funny because I was reading about how they were talking about like things they thought about cutting out, like they they thought about cutting the shrimp boat stuff, and I'm like, no, that would have been stupid. Uh, there was another thing they thought about cutting that would have been dumb, but I was like, the run sequence you probably could have cut down run a sequence, lot, or maybe even all together. But you need to add much more to it. Like, where does he? Like, they say he sleeps and he eats and all that. Where? What? How? Where does he shit? I does he shitting off the side of the road? Is he just shitting? Like, where does he sleep? How much does he stop? Does he take breaks, or is he just <laughs> literally running until he's tired and he sleeps? I I don't understand. Plus, you'd have to be eating constantly because you're running all the time. There's so many questions I have. Like, is how is this possible? I don't know. I don't know, Bush. Darth Vader, Jenny. Eh, I don't know. <clears throat> Who really yeah, is more no. in touch with the dark side? I mean, let's be honest here. <laughs> Jenny, I mean, the thing about Jenny is she's, you know, she's just an oblivious idiot. She's just as retarded as Forrest, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. You know. That argument know, but, definitely could be made. Yeah. They're both retards in their own special way. Yeah. And they make retarded love. It's true. <laughs> and make a make a genius baby somehow who sees dead people. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 the form of retardation he gets as he sees ghosts. And then Lord Toxic, he becomes the son of Tony Colette. So I know you love that. But uh, oh, and giggles oh. if you're not familiar with that. Yeah, Lord Toxic doesn't like Tony Colette. <laughs> he said he has nothing against her personally other than probably her face. Oh. <laughs> I told I told Lord Toxic to stop telling uh, the internet like what bothers him because it'll just keep haunting him forever. And I was That's right true. just now when you brought that up. Um, 
Yeah, this is great how he invents the shit happens bumper sticker. He also invents have a nice day. <laughs> the, yeah. The, the smiley face. This is this is right here, the most ridiculous part of the whole movie. Yes. yes. Um, I was like, this that was is just, that's just stupid. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a funny zany, gag, but it's yeah, a really one dumb zany, one. naked gun style joke in the middle of your awesome, like, drama movie, dramedy. <laughs> yeah, it's Pretty that brilliant, was, actually. It's like, it's funny, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, can I call this a good joke and a flaw at the same time? Because it feels like yes. that. <laughs> yeah. I think so. It can be both. It, He's yeah, literally like, wearing in this his case, Bubba Gam like hat. Like, yeah, been wearing the so Bubba Gump obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is the billionaire, right? It's I mean at least a multimillionaire. I would think in the, at this point in history, you're probably a multimillionaire. I don't. Were, were there but a the lot point of is like there's no then? headlines. There's no headlines saying shrimp billionaire hits the road, runs forever. You know, nothing. Nobody, like you said, that's pretty. I never thought of that, but nobody connected the dots. Nobody knows who the hell this guy is. Yeah, it's like there are. I mean, it's like there's plenty of news stories about him. I mean, Jenny keeps a freaking scrapbook, but I'm like, and yeah. nobody realized. That it's like, guys, you know his name, and they were like, "Oh, wait a minute, that's the guy who started Bubba Gump Shrimp, which he's a millionaire." And oh, that's right, yeah. he was a football all American, and he's but, met the presidents. And but come on, that's <laughs> one of the bit. That's like one of my favorite themes of this movie, though, and especially if you go back to the back frame, the with the all them standing out there looking at him, like like he's like a you know Jesus betraying them or something, but. But it's just so funny because like the the common theme, the common common metaphor is like, yeah, he's a stupid person. Stupid people can do great things. But it's also like oh, the other thing you say. This is the a other stalker thing look says, right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like stalker having the best day of his life kind of look right now. <laughs> he remembers. Found you. He remembers. <laughs> but the other thing this movie kind of uh, keeps hammering is like the world is very stupid, too. And like the idea, like you've got this stupid guy running across the country for no reason. He even says, I don't know why I'm running. And yet he still gets a bunch of like stragglers, like following him. Like we like I, they, they're, they're just, just people even, they're without, even stupider. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, a lot of directionless people who think this guy's got it together. It's like he's just running. Just shot. It's people who just latch on to something and think there's some special meaning to it. And it's like, no, there's yeah, really a few no weeks later when they read the expose this. saying he was the shrimp billionaire who has an IQ of 70 or whatever. And you're, they're just like, Oh my God, I can't believe I devoted seven weeks running the country with him. What's going on to him. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it, it, it bugs me that nobody knows. His, it's like, I don't mind like the regular people not knowing him. It's like, but I'm just saying like the news, the news, not knowing who he is. I'm like, yeah. God. Yeah, Gosh. but what's important is Jenny cares. Jenny's got this scrapbook and shit, and uh, she's excited. And to she's see him. finally, oh, there's Robert know, finally gonna wife. tell him that he's got a son. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah, Robert Zemeckis' wife. She was uh, the lady in the Tales of the Crypt episode about the killer Santa. That was the lady who dropped off little Haley Joel. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, I do agree, Bush. This is the best that Jenny looks in the entire film. She looks pretty great here. Yeah. So girls, and, women are good and, when they show their neck off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it. it <laughs> another like, great scene he, showing how you're his daddy, Forrest. You <laughs> owe us so much child support. You don't even know. No. But also, <laughs> it's so funny where he's like, you know, his name's Forrest. Yeah. His name's Forrest. He named yeah, after his like daddy. Like me. <laughs> you got a daddy named Forrest too? Like he's so <laughs> dumb. It's hilarious. It's like you're his daddy. He's like what? <laughs> Now I, I I do think it's uh it is there's a a sweet moment where he's he's concerned about you know did he inherit his IQ and stuff like in that he's mm-hmm. up, like he's already starting to think like a father which I was like that's yeah. that's good and it's well acted I'm like yeah I like that that's that was really Megan, good uh, Megan sent me a super cut of all those terrible reaction channels like reacting to that line <laughs> and how every single one of them are all like tearing up and crying at that shit it was great yeah <laughs> yeah it's a, some i mean some reaction compilations for certain moments of film i'm like yeah those are those are fun to watch other ones are just like guys it's not it's not that big a deal it's calm yeah. down it's calm oh down. no i was still making fun of these people in the reaction video channels because like I, I think they're all lying when they say i've never seen these movies or uh, exactly least, i yeah. i agree like i i was talking to someone on twitter and she was someone had said, you should do a movie reaction channel. And I'm like, no, she shouldn't because she's not dishonest. And I was like, most yeah. of those movie reactors, if they're overly emoting, they're full of crap. It's like, Just, I, I have tried doing, I tried doing those before I really started my channel. I wanted to see if maybe that'd be fun to do, but then I realized, same. Oh, this is all a bunch of crap. It's like, these people yeah, are man. lying when they react this way. You have, 
like if they're do, if if reactors are doing commentary, I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. That's totally cool. But <laughs> those people who overly emote and you know lose their minds or have these spiritual experiences seeing the movie for the quote unquote first time, I'm like, you all are full of it. Oh my god, he vadered. <laughs> <laughs> he vadered. Here's, here's the talk where she says, "Hey, I basically have uh, some kind of finite time to live." And, uh, exactly, and, Tim. And... This kid can also see dead people. He's one of the smartest kids in his class, and he talks to spirits. Yeah, That's it's why he wrote a letter baby. to her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, right. She wrote a letter back, you know? It's like, there you go. A week later, the there's your sequel. For, Forrest, it's like, like little Forrest wants to tell you something. He says, Grandma want, says hi to me sometimes. <laughs> Dude, then you can have Forrest Gump have like a MacGruber style sex scene with Jenny. <laughs> We watched McGruber recently. It was amazing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I agree, Bush. That that was that's one of the cringiest things I've ever seen on a YouTube oh my video. God. He the he Vader thing. I'm like, jeez. Here's what's I'm great like, about having a big plantation sized house. Uh, you can do your own wedding there, and it doesn't look tacky or weird or anything like that. Yeah, you, know, you don't. Have I will say, I I. And it's it's probably not that big a deal. It's probably even a little gay that it bothers me. But uh, I don't like the fact that her wedding dress makes her look like a hippie again. I'd be like, I, wouldn't you want to distance yourself from that part of us? Because you look like a hippie. And you know, that's, I think you're right. That you, is I would gay. really I was like, I don't like them making her look like a hippie here. D distance yourself. Dude, once a hippie, you always can. a hippie, man. You know, even if they clean up and stuff. And, still yes, Bush, and in their total hair and... no bra here, too. I was like, holy yeah. crap, Jenny. She's, she's showing off the girls. Had, had to be, had to go, had to go full whore one more time, I guess. <laughs> oh, here's another really good special movie. effects shot. <laughs> when the camera comes up in the one take. <laughs> it's a nice one. Yeah. Subtle. And, uh. It's like you got new legs, Lieutenant. I was like, yep, titanium alloy. Same thing that he was on the space shuttle. And he got over his racism, his, yeah. his hatred of the Vietnamese people. He married a lovely Forrest, Vietnamese. I, I, I went back and I found a woman. <laughs> yeah. Also, I love I the, the look he gives me. her. He he gives him kind of like when he talks about the shrimp boat to Bubba. He's like, Dad, Dan, you're <laughs> you're having sex. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, granted, Money. he he was doing that anyway. I mean, he I mean, granted, they were women of ill repute, it seemed. But hey. maybe they actually knew each other in Vietnam, and he went back and got her. Remember my favorite whore from Saigon? I found her and brought her home. He's like, I, I always I told should, you I loved her. And I, I, her. I, I I met her. I met her in Saigon. I had shot her husband. Went back. She said, "That's nah, no biggie. I didn't like him anyway." Now we're getting married. I actually yeah. fell in love with her delicious rice curry she made. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Won my heart. She makes delicious Vietnam noms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now they have their sweet little family life. It's 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 lovely. It's so nice. But uh Jenny's dying. She's got the hepatite AIDS or something. One of the two. I don't know which. <laughs> they don't say. <laughs> it's one of it's one of the things. But this is her last scene before she dies. She says she loves him, and then it's like, bye bye. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's telling her stuff he used to think about and whatnot. And then she dies. And it's over. But I, I love all the B, like all the, the like you know B roll footage of like earlier scenes of his life. They always get like the best, the best uh, shots of the uh, you know the the vistas. This movie has great. Yeah, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Location scouting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, you all are perverts. <laughs> Stop defending Jenny, goddamn! I'm not really defending Jenny as much as I'm like, you know. I think it's more plain. We're trying to play shit. a little bit of devil's advocate for Forrest, I guess, because I I can't fully defend Jenny. I don't. I I'm okay with what they were going for. I don't think they necessarily do it all that well. It's no. kind of a mixed bag. I I very much appreciate the Jenny's the villain memes. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of truth to it, but uh. Yeah, it's, no, I, I, I would have I would have done her. I would have written her character slight, you know, somewhat different because she she does things that they didn't have to have her do that were like, oh, that's kind of cruel. But uh, yeah. 
Yeah, she, I guess she would have been, what, 37 when she passed away. That's is it cruel if you don't understand you're being cruel? You know, and that's not really, like, really relative to this movie specifically. But, like, if you're, like, obliviously being cruel, is that cruelty? I mean, it's, 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 I mean. Or is it only if you're, like, purposely, like, maliciously being cruel that you're cruel? I mean, I don't know. Cruelty. I, I, I don't know. if I, I mean, I don't know. Cruelty. I feel like you can be passively cruel. I mean. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. I mean, you may not be like, uh, I mean, you're not sadistic about it. You don't like it for its own sake necessarily, but, uh, no, no. you know, you can commit an act of cruelty without necessarily realizing you're committing an act of cruelty. I mean, the Nazis thought they were right. Let's be honest. They thought they were well, right. <laughs> oh, but yeah, he gets all weepy and it is sad. It's like, it's from his perspective. It's like, yeah, you do feel bad for him because, you know, he's lost the love of his life and yeah. never really had her for very long, which I mean, let's be honest, probably for the best for you, Forrest. Um, and hopefully very... she didn't pass to you what she had. Hopefully it didn't pass on to little Forrest either. Cause right. uh, you know, we, we don't, uh... we don't want, we don't want Haley Joe Osment, you know, talking to you in the afterlife either. <laughs> That'd be unfortunate. Does, um, where did they bury mother? Because they buried her under that big tree that they used to hang out on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's mother? Where did they bury oh, her? Sa- oh, Sally. Oh, um, I think I, I, I don't know. They did. I don't know if like he ever visits her grave. So it could just be at the house. It could be at an actual shot cemetery. her out of a cannon and you're buried under a buried buried under the floor. Yeah, they board. just just lawn dart. You know, just you shoot her. her no, they the taxidermied her like an Anthony Perkins psycho. She's up. She's up in the <laughs> attic like in a chair. I tend to think she was probably buried at the house. That's that would be my guess. Somewhere on their massive lot of land. <laughs> it's probably a family plot or something, but she probably just got pushed down the river. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's mama in... a sky burial. Just <laughs> shot her body up and fed her to vultures. <laughs> we fed it to the crows. She always now, wanted it that way. Now all the crows have the cancer. <laughs> yeah, his favorite book, Curious George. Yeah. Now, the, well, okay. if, I mean, if you remit, if and heck, if you remit it today, it could be by Curious George. That would be his favorite. There you one. go. There um, you now, go. this actress you had mentioned her um, mm-hmm. earlier. I love her in uh, Men in Black, talking about oh, the Edgar yeah. Suit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> yeah. that was sugar water. <laughs> That's my favorite of hers. Skin's falling off your neck, Edgar. <laughs> and then you, and then you realize her, and then Will Smith starts giving her the whole Get spiel your about big butt back in the. <laughs> <laughs> What the heck is that? Huh? <laughs> She's great. And Will Smith's like, you're gonna you're gonna get you some new clothes, you're gonna tear your interior, decorate this place, you're gonna go find yourself, you know, get all get your groove back, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh that's the film. What a sweet little movie. Feather floats away, it's all adorable, it's sweet. But like I... Forrest Gump says at the end of the movie, he thinks that the meaning of life is that it is both completely random and on some kind of set preordained destiny which you know doesn't make sense and does at the same time it's it's very i might be still on like the residual effects of a psychedelic so you know i'm sounding off flowery that's probably why <laughs> it's like you're you're I, I think that's part of the reason lord toxic that stupenzo is uh he's very much identifying with jenny at the moment I'm starting yeah, to realize he, jenny he was using a lot of the real. same substances you know i've dated plenty of chicks that were way worse <laughs> haven't we all Sure. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that is Forrest Gump. I'll give a little bit of the trivias that I've written down. So Forrest Gump on IMDb.com is ranked number 11 all time in their top 250. So which funny enough, though, is still just third place out of films that came out in 1994. We mentioned earlier that uh, Shawshank Redemption and Pulp Fiction were released that year. Those movies actually ranked higher. Uh, Cannoli is already saying Shawshank was robbed. I personally prefer Pulp Fiction. I think that's the better movie. But if Shawshank had won, I would have been totally cool with that because it's a phenomenal film also. Uh, The movie was nominated for 13 Academy Awards. It won six of them, which included Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Editing. That's one I think it shouldn't have won. Um, (laughs) Best Visual Effects. And it was nominated for Supporting Actor Gary Sinise, which... Gosh, that I, I can't believe that Sinise and Samuel L. Jackson lost to Martin Landau. Which, granted, I love Landau and Ed Wood. Ed Wood's a great movie. He is great oh. in that. But 
I would have given it to either Sam. Ja- I would have probably leaned Sam Jackson first, and he's a very, very close second, then probably Landau third. Uh, yeah. But uh, nominated I would say for- the thing about the editing, um, mm-hmm. probably the reason why it won best editing is because a lot of the visual effects that it did win for were very like editing based. Like we're going to splice multiple shots together using, you know, it's like, I don't know if those two are kind of maybe holding hands in the award season per se. Perhaps. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But uh, I mean, and I, yeah, I, 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 Adam, I know you, I, I think, I think you mentioned, was it last night? You love the movie Ed Wood. You're a huge fan of that, which uh, yeah, oh, yeah. And Ed Wood's fantastic. I, I love Ed Wood. Um, but uh, I, I would have gone Sam Jackson or Gary Sinise on that one. Uh, though Landau is great in that movie. He's pretty dang funny as Bela Lugosi. Uh, was nominated for art and sector, uh, art and set direction, sound, sound editing, makeup, and for the musical score. Uh, already mentioned the films it beat. Uh, uh, already mentioned that John Travolta was the original studio choice for Forrest Gump, which eh, that's not eh. Not I'm terrible. Terrible. Not a terrible choice, but I, I mean, I think they got it right with Forrest. Uh, two other actors that were considered were actually uh, Bill Murray and Chevy Chase, <laughs> which uh, that I don't, I don't, I, I'm not sure how I feel about those. It's like, I kind of could see them, but at the same time, I think the movie would lean a little bit more comedy rather than drama if you cast one of those two. But uh yeah, that's. I thought that was a little bit interesting to consider because I mean, I've seen now that I've seen Bill Murray kind of do drama, he actually is really he's pretty dang good at it. I don't know about Chevy Chase. I think then it it definitely would have leaned more comedy if you had Chevy Chase. Yeah, it would be it. It would feel too much like I am Fletch. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, obviously, this is the film debut of Haley Joel Osment. Uh, other directors that were considered for the director's chair were Terry Gilliam and Barry Sonnenfeld. Uh, the AV Club ranked Forrest Gump's soundtrack as the 32nd best of all time. The budget for the film was $55 million, as we mentioned earlier, and the movie grossed $678 million worldwide. So yeah, the, uh, the book writer got absolutely screwed on the three percent well, of the profits they got really I wanted screwed. to talk about that a little bit because like the book is so different it at is one point. very different I heard there's not even Jenny in the book is that true I mean, she's in it I mean I, well like there's no love interest basically is what I heard I, I don't um, yeah I, I also yeah, heard that he goes into uh, space and a bunch of other wacky shit yeah he goes and... he goes into space he becomes a wrestler um yeah it's uh it's very different. The tone of it's very different. Like I said, the college scene, that's where him and Jenny sleep together. I don't know if Jenny's as prominent character. I didn't read the whole book. I just read a couple of chapters and yeah. a few little so at what point does like, you know, about. at what point does the adapting screenwriter get more credit than, you know, the, 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 the person who wrote the uh, source material? <laughs> well, I mean, it could, I mean, I do think he deserves at least, you know, he should have been mentioned and you know, like, yeah. like Lance brought up, he I had negotiated 3% and, got nowhere near that i mean look you got a decent chunk of change overall like i think it amounted to something like a million between this screenplay and the sequel one which granted never got made but like if it amounts to one million that's not close to three percent of the movie's profits because uh those were pretty substantial he probably should have gotten somewhere more in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 million dollars yeah but that uh nice little hollywood accounting there uh I'm just picturing like the Hollywood assholes, like you know, telling him on the phone when he's like screaming at them, just be like, "Hey, maybe you could write a book about it," and just like hang up on him, like they're mobsters and shit. <laughs> Ugh, evil bastards in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I would uh, so let's uh, go on and give our scores. What would you rate the movie? Giggles and bits. What would you? What would you say uh, you'd give this film? Gosh, I would go nine out of ten. I, uh, yeah. Not out of 10. This is uh, such a good movie. There's so many great, there's multiple themes and layers. Uh, each character represents a different part of like America at that time. Force is definitely the, the idealized version of what people thought America was. Jenny was sort of, was the, like basically what everyone thought the hippie side of, uh, of America was at that time. And then Lieutenant Dan represents the Vietnam veterans. And uh, it all just kind of interplays really well. And uh, having a tragic character like Jenny have a redemption arc uh, definitely leans into like one of many religious themes I can I can see 
mm -hmm. uh, throughout the film, uh, as well as for, like forces. Uh, uh, he he definitely is like removed from the wheel of fortune, uh, in that he doesn't seek fame and fortune for himself, and he's sort of just watching the wheel from out from the outside, and it just success just sort of happens for him, which is like I guess the idealized version of that. And uh, but uh, yeah, I just love this movie all the way through so good that's, that's a great score right? baby <laughs> <laughs> that's a good score <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, enzo what would you uh what would you give us um let me tell you guys a little anecdote um when i lived with a man had twice my age when i was in my mid-20s i lived with a guy about my age now 38 40 and all he did all day was uh, sit in his room, smoke cigarettes, drink coffee and soda and play video games and smoke weed. And he had like his teeth were all rotted out from soda. He had like meth mouth from it. Basically, he was nice. aware of this. He had a fear of dentists is what he said. Um, he also, you know, had very, very strange tastes. Like he would say things like Southland Tales was his favorite movie. Hmm. And that was puzzling. But he'd also say things like. I'm just to do an impression of him smoking a cigarette. He'd just be like, Forrest Gump. Oh my God, that movie fucking sucks. It's a piece of shit. It's so overrated. It's trash. Oh my God. And I remember like one time we were like, had friends over at the house and we all like stopped. Like, what? Like, you hate that movie? <laughs> wow. So by that standard, it's not like it's the greatest movie of all time because it's like better than all the other movies, but it's one of the greatest movies of all time because when you find someone who hates this movie, you're like, puzzled by that you're it's like a, such an anomaly you know i understand this movie's overrated this movie's not my favorite it's not great the question is do you like shawshank or this better megan my girl uh, my uh girlfriend she would loves this movie she was she was kind of underwhelmed by shawshank actually she gives this movie a 10 she actually yeah. i actually showed her shawshank and she was actually like that was pretty good we watched uh forrest Gump probably countless times it's uh it's one of those things it's like her comfort movie well, now you need I to show us. her this. You need to show her the Vex Electronica version because this is the Indian version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you uh, go. Lol, okay. sing It's the, the I will definitely. I will tell her about this. We'll, 2022's oh, yeah. Forrest Gump from India. It's the Bollywood. Is it five version. hours long and full of songs? I, I hope so. It better. Be. I, I hope be they sing. It isn't. I hope they sing the entire soundtrack from the American version. That'd be great. Okay, well, I <laughs> guess I would rate this movie um, a solid uh, eight. No, yeah, eight and a half severed uh, legs from uh, <laughs> war veterans. Nice. Uh, as for myself, like I said, there is. Uh, I do have some issues with uh, a few things here and there. I, I kind of put this on the lower end of great movies, so it's like I do consider this a great film. Uh, but I, I do have some problems with some of a little bit of the character writing for Jenny, you know, editing gaff or two here. There's not that big a deal. Um, just, those are just things I happen to notice this time around, but, uh, I would still give this movie, uh, eight of Jenny's sexual partners out of 10. I, uh, I do think it's, it's a pretty dang good movie. I, I liked it a lot. I enjoyed rewatching it. It was, uh, fun to take a trip back with this uh this film but yeah i it's very quotable very well written in that sense and uh i would even be interested to see the bollywood version just because this picture just looks so weird and funny to me i literally took a picture of my screen and just sent it to, to me and like i'm like we're watching this immediately <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> yeah i gotta find this <laughs> yeah lol sing shada shada do it this, like i said it's the vex electronica version that's what we're doing but yeah, it's a dang good movie. Don't think it should have won Best Picture, but uh, it's not. It's yeah. at the same time, it's like there are a lot of years where it's it would have been the best movie of the year. So I don't have a problem with it having a Best Picture win. It's just the movies it beat. Were just You're just on Team dead. Shawshank, or what? I'm Team Pulp Fiction personally. Pulp but Fiction, Shawshank, right? Yeah. Shawshank is a pretty like you know, razor thin, close film. To there that. was another I, I, good I one. That was, Oh yeah. You said quiz show, right? That was nominated also. Yeah. I, and I, I think quiz show is a, is a better like quiz shows the movie where it's like, I think it's better than Forrest show. Gump. But if it was, if those two were the best movies that year and Forrest Gump had beaten it, I wouldn't have been upset. Cause I think they're close. 
I think I Pulp think, Fiction um, and Shawshank are the highest two, and they're very close to each other. I think Quiz Show and Forrest Gump are very close to each other. I just think Quiz Show is slightly better. Yeah, I think this movie, Forrest Gump, gave way to uh, like Titanic, the big budget kind of big special effects driven historical movies. And then Titanic was so successful that like every best picture, um, every Oscar bait movie for like the early 20th, first century was like, historical epic with lots of money you know thrown at it you know yeah i mean this was pretty rare before titanic in this movie you know yeah i mean gotta gotta remember this was uh this was before the billion dollar movie era there were no billion dollar movies yet so a movie making 600 million dollars that just didn't happen that's that does not that's not something that happened i i'd be curious to know where this movie ranked uh after its theatrical run at that time because uh, yeah, there's there couldn't have been very many movies that were even close to it, you know. Because uh, yeah. Titanic was the first one to ever cross a billion, and uh, I know I know Home Alone for a little while was really high up on the list because it grossed something like four hundred right. plus million. That's this obviously bit it. Well, Jurassic Park for a that hit a billion, but not until much much later. It didn't hit a billion until like the twenty tens uh, on yeah. re release. So that's the I think Jurassic Park is the oldest movie to hit a billion, but it didn't hit it for a long time. I put it this way. Titanic was first. The second movie to hit that mark was uh, Return of the King. So they were really going. They were really few and far between until, you know, kind of the modern era. Uh, And I yeah, I agree. Bush Titanic should have been railroaded by L.A. Confidential. Heck, Jackie Brown, I think, is the best movie of that year personally. But L.A. Confidential, as far as the Oscar nominees, was right should have been the one that won. I think it's a way better movie than Titanic. Yeah. 100%. yeah. But you know what? You never underestimate the power of teenage girls watching a movie a hundred times, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. But uh, anywho, so that's pretty much it. So giggles and bits. Do you have anything on your channel coming up that you would like to plug? Uh, I well, It's, it's a bit of a rough schedule. I have a kid coming in a couple of weeks. So, Oh, um, fresh from Taiwan. Love it. But um, oh, nice. No, my wife's my wife's pregnant. Uh, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't need <laughs> don't need to be uh, rumors started on that one. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. So it's a bit bit of a tight schedule. I do plan on streaming. Uh, what is it called? Hell Divers Two. I'm I'm tired now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Hell Divers Two. I plan on streaming that a little bit. Uh, loving that game. Been playing it a little and. Uh, Gosh, I, I'm still working on writing this stinking script for Far Away Paladin. It turned into like a review of just a specific episode that I felt like changed the entire course of the series uh, for the anime. And uh, now I, I, I just have to talk about the whole thing because it's just that damn good for a sci-fi fantasy. But uh, yeah, and then uh, I'm working on trying to cover some like classic old time radio shows. I'm trying to think of a way to do that. So nice. I've been. Yeah. The what is it? Uh challenges of the yukon uh, about a canadian mountie and his badass dog uh so yeah i've um, been uh grinding on that quite a bit so but uh yeah that's that's pretty much what i got hopefully i can follow through that's the that's the biggest issue with the schedule nice all right and uh enzo Aside from, you know, coming down from the high and taking a shower, what else yeah, you got going? I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think I might go pop in on uh, Gooch's channel and say what's up about Scavenger's Reign. Nice. Um, episode five, I think they're watching right now. Um, I've seen them all. I could probably hop in blind like I did for this one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I definitely need to unpack my car full of crap. And then I also will probably stay up all night and see if I can edit the Heavenly Kid before 2 30 p.m tomorrow because <laughs> wouldn't that be something if i still managed to get a video out tomorrow huh yeah. wouldn't that be something that well so i might try amazing. to um i'm also going to try to get my renfield video out sunday if not i'm also thinking it might be better just sunday do a real epic stream about the eclipse fest um mm-hmm. because uh, there was quite a debacle down there um i was at another one in uh, utopia texas that was awesome and we were all hearing about all of our friends. I might open the links up to my personal friends, see if I can get a bunch of hippie wooks to come in and tell <laughs> the story about how they were stranded at Burnett, Texas, because the Eclipse Fest got canceled. It's a oh, tale wow. of uh, insurance fraudery and uh, 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 rumors abound of death and poisonings and incompetence uh, to Firefest type levels. 
<laughs> so yeah, maybe we'll talk about that on Sunday. We'll see. Nice. <laughs> Sounds um, fun. And yeah, other than that, just taking it easy, man. Gonna just decompress. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh that's for myself. Uh let's see. Tomorrow I'll have another gaming stream going on the gaming with Gore channel. I just started playing Returnal because I had finished Final Fantasy 7. So that should be a lot of fun. Returnal's a great game. It's fun to watch. It's really fun to play. Uh next week. Uh, episode 15 of the King's Court will be uh, one of the, I think that's the last five o'clock one I'm going to have for, no, I take that back. There is one more five o'clock one coming up in May, but I've got two more five o'clock ones over the next like three months trying to get rid of those, to be honest. I like the nine o'clock time slot better, but uh, next week we will be talking one of my favorite comedies of the nineties, uh, Mystery Men. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. Mystery Men is hilarious and underrated. So yeah, going to be talking that one. Star. Yeah. <laughs> so got that next week. And I am working on a semi-secret project that I'm still in the early stages of it because I only decided last week what my next video was going to be. So uh, I'm writing that script right now. Uh, probably as I get close to the end of it is when I'll you know reveal what that is. But uh, it's a great movie from the year 2014. I'll give away that much. But yeah, mm. I uh, hey Lord Toxic, if you want to drop by, uh, if you if you want to be on five o'clock next Tuesday, you yeah, do it. are definitely welcome. Because yeah, I love Mystery Men. Mystery Men is fantastic. Would love to have you. No problem. Does anybody That's else it. have the theme song to Forrest Gump, the piano suite in their head? This whole a thing, little bit, yeah, story. a little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah my god i can't stop playing it but uh yeah it's uh should have a fun time with that next week uh, so hope to see you all there for that one but uh we're gonna go ahead and check out here i want to thank everybody in the chat y'all were great very lively a lot of fun with y'all uh, and also want to thank my guests, obviously Lance, who uh, had to check out early. It was great. Enzo came in, uh, came in from the eclipse, came in clutch. And, yeah. And of course, giggles and bits. Uh, thank you for being here. Looking forward to having you on again, for sure. Yeah. Nice. Meeting uh, you. Make sure mm -hmm. anyone who have, if anyone happens to catch this stream after the fact, because I already know most everybody in the chat probably already supports these guys, except giggles and bits. Y'all need to support his channel. He's an awesome dude. You're a lot of you're all just now meeting him, but uh, appreciate it. His his information is in the video description, uh, as is all the rest of my guests. But yeah, I will see you all next week. So until then, good night, God bless, and Godspeed.